The views, information, or opinions expressed during the Geeks Under the Influence podcast are solely those of the individuals involved and do not necessarily represent those of RVA Magazine, Loot Crate, Amazon.com, or their employees. Listener discretion is advised. Fuck off if you don't like it. Yeah. What pisses me off more yeah. than anything else with The Amazing Spider-Man 2 is the fact that you have two amazing actors. You've got Jamie Foxx, who I'm not a big fan of his music, but acting wise, I mean, if you if you yeah. haven't seen The Soloist with Robert Downey Jr. Oh, and amazing. It's, it's amazing. It's amazing. Absolutely. Ray, Ray was Ray phenomenal. Ray was amazing. He's an incredibly talented actor. Yes, he is. And then you've got Paul Giamatti, who's also a no joke, solid I mean, fuck, fucking, fucking sideways. Sideways. That was amazing. an amazing film. Never, never mind. Big fat his, liar. Although I didn't no. expect a, a rhino to like at the end. He's like, while well, he's coming at him, like have a thing come down where it's wine. That would have been sweet. I would have loved if Jamie yes. Foxx called, called him thing. called him pig vomit at some point. That would, <laughs> yes. have, been, that would have been good. <laughs> but uh, oh WNBC. Yes. So yeah, but then Sandman. You you have these two amazing actors that play these fucking jokes. It was bad enough with Electro where he, there's no build up to him being called Electro except that he just names himself like, I'm Electro. And then they follow suit with that shit with a rhino shows up in the last like couple minutes of the film. Is I guess a lead up to like, Sinister this six. just keeps happening, yeah. you know? And he's like, I'm the rhino. And he's got like a shitty like head tattoos and he looks awful and his accent's terrible. And I'm pretty sure Paul Giamatti was just like, I'm going to make it obvious I'm not trying. Like to get not, obvious that I was only spent one day on this film. Yeah, um, <laughs> this is how that played out. Uh, hey, Paul, what's up? Uh, we're making we're making this movie. We got to pop it out for quick. We're just trying to fill some spots. We got we got this dude He's in a suit, big fucking rhino. What do you think? No, dude, I, I have a reputation. We will pay you a shitload of money. All right, fuck it. All right, it's only like three days of work too. Done. And that's like, how that whole. By that's the way, how that whole thing happened. Can you do? Uh, Tim Curry in Air Force One. Can you do? Can you do that kind of Russian? Uh, yeah, we're, we're aiming for like this super Wait. like super fake Russian accent. Wait, first of all, Tim Curry was not in Air Force. Oh, One. I'm sorry. He, you're talking all about right. Gary Oldman. You're talking no, about Gary, Gary Oldman. I'm sorry, Gary Oldman. If you Never. want to talk about Tim Curry, I mean that's Mikhail's Navy. That's, if you want to talk about him and like a really Mikhael's bad Navy. Russian accent, that's Mikhail's also, Navy. I think it was, it was one of the Red Alert games or something where he he did a bad Russian accent as well. Uh, that was really terrible. I think that's where I got it mixed up. But uh, yeah, no, I know that Paul Giamatti, if he had any shits to give, would have been able to give a pretty decent accent there. But he was just like, no, you're giving me a fucking head yeah. tattoo and a robot rhino. Fuck you. He did I'm, do, I'm doing I'm he did Lady in the Water or whatever. That, lady in the Water. Yeah, 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 yeah. Water. I'm nice Shyamalama I mean, ding dong shit. Plus, what do you expect from the guy whose father actually kicked Pete Rose out of baseball? You know, just saying. Just throwing mm. that out there. Because he did. His dad was the commissioner that you, kicked Pete Rose out of the baseball. Don't make the son fa- pay for the sins of the father. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> No, but no, he's a good. It's actor. like olden right? times not, up in I'm here. Not, I'm not all I'm saying is waste of talent is what I'm saying. An absolute Huge. waste of talent oh, sure. between Paul Giamatti and Jamie Foxx, oh, and that alone makes that series of Spider-Man movies the absolute worst out of the now three film adaptations of the Spider-Man comics. But tonight we're going to be talking about Amazing Spider-Man, the first Sam Raimi Spider-Man trilogy. But mostly we're going to be talking about the newly released Spider-Man: Homecoming. Not only is it Homecoming because part of it actually takes place at homecoming yes but also because papa came home daddy yeah. spider-man is finally yeah. back in the arms of marvel thank and god my god what they have done with this movie i am so excited to talk about on mm-hmm. this episode of geeks under the episode uh, <laughs> on this episode of geeks under the influence episode 110 welcome we're all really excited <laughs> And uh, yeah, that uh, th- I have been so worried about this film, not because Marvel has done us dirty in any regards, but because of what it means with the arrangements they made with Sony in order to get this property back into the arms of Marvel. And if they screwed it up like Amazing Spider-Man was screwed up, it wasn't going to continue. Mm-hmm. Right. And uh, so this there's a lot on the line with Spider-Man Homecoming. And we're going to talk about that after we talk about who's on this episode of Geeks Under the Influence. To my left is the Danwich. The Danimal <laughs> is here. What's up? Uh, you got to see that uh, this preview night, right? Uh, yeah, I actually saw it last night. 
last night. Last and night. did you see it in IMAX or just regular? I, I did see it in IMAX because uh, the IMAX theater is, you know, 10 minutes down the road from where I work. So it makes it easy. Nice. Um, ironically, they did not do the IMAX in 3D this time. Uh, and apparently, that's something they're starting to do now, too. They're doing a lot of 2D releases in IMAX, which. That's good. I'm okay with that. I'm like, fine I don't, with that, I'm too. Because not, not every movie has to be in 3D. You know, I, I get that there's like this ongoing thing where, you know, 3D is kind of the big thing now. Um, but this didn't need to be in 3D. I can't think of a single scene in this movie where I thought, hey, this would have been really awesome had it been in 3D. It, it Nothing really sticks out. I mean, maybe some web shooting, but that's I think it. the holding the ship together with his webs would have looked kind of cool in 3D. In 3D. Yeah. I, think that, but, I think that would have, like, it would have looked a lot more detailed, but I don't think, like, it wouldn't have been something that really popped out to the screen on you. Yeah, but oh. with, with the scope of IMAX, though, did that really help with the film? I thought the, so. Okay. Yeah, I thought what I mean, especially, you know, when he's when he's like, you know, doing his his training, I thought it was it was a great thing to have because you yeah. really got to see the scope of the warehouse that he was kind of. Oh, fair was, enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that makes that sense. Was really nice. Uh, next to so. Dan, which is the man who apparently protects himself from BB gun pellets with the fo- with the uh, back of his phone, as we discovered. That's what it looked like. It looked like a little BB gun shot. I mean, you know, I, I'm pretty sure I destroyed it waking up in the morning, but it could have. I don't know. Somebody just could have been trying slapping to, at it like an alarm Somebody clock could have just shot it at me out of nowhere. That's like, true. fuck you, Smash. Well, with some of your terrible opinions, I actually understand why people would be shooting at you in the I first place. I was probably wearing a Superman shirt at the time. That's... It was probably you. What do you? Wait a minute. Look, let's, let's <laughs> move on from this topic. Uh, of course, Kyle Smash is here. Here to talk about how this is almost as good as Batman v Superman, in his opinion. First off, oh. Uh, no nobody way. said that ever you were thinking it see that <laughs> that's uh that's fake news is that oh that's f- <laughs> <laughs> it's an old fact old fact it's an old yeah. fact uh uh, jo- uh piggyback what he was talking about of scenes not you know there wasn't too many to think of what would really pop out in 3d or something you didn't really need to see in 3d to enjoy um i will say that i'll go with the boat scene but not when he's holding it together his his attempting to piece it to you know to build you know it within it and and hold it together like while he was doing that just that would have been cool as shit so basically doing what we try to do with our lives most of the time is just hold it together hold with together just strings, yeah. with string just just enough so it doesn't sink so yeah. we miss the we miss the one, one of the major support structures and it just falls apart yeah pretty much <laughs> that's yeah. pretty much how that it's works it's like i forgot to pick up the kid from school and all like, you and need everything <laughs> just falls apart but that's the importance of having friends cuz then they could just swoop in and push it back together yeah, long see, enough if, to you to get safe. If Miles Morales was on that boat, then it would have been fine. He'd be like, I got you, boo. And yeah. would just like, he would have just swung around it. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Uh, next up on the panel is uh, the sexual chocolate. Mm. My uh, right hand man on Geeks Under the Influence. My my jerk partner. Yeah. Um, He's right under the so. table. My, right my, hand, my right hand. Dutch rudderer. Uh, oh, the, the Miles Morales to my Peter Parker. That's racist. <laughs> You're Dutch. <laughs> what? Wow, was whitewashing already? Is... Yeah, right? I'm just saying. Oh, fuck, Hobbit. Mr. Lowdown Brian MacGyver's here. What's <laughs> up, guys? You uh, got to see this movie today, right? At uh, 12.15. Yeah, so you got to see it. It's fresh. So it's fresh oh, in it's the mind. it's fresh as fuck. That's perfect. Yes. PM. I was so excited. Yeah. We have a group message that we do for a lot of these episodes, so we can kind of figure out what we're doing before we start, and... I didn't want to mention anything specifically about Spider-Man Homecoming until everyone on the had, on the list had uh, listened to it. So luckily, after Lowdown got to watch it, it was just like, yay, we can actually talk about this now. Yeah, I think I think I just responded. I was like, holy shit, fan fucking tastic. And that was pretty much absolutely after that. Everyone knew like, oh, OK, he's done. <laughs> he's seen it now. Uh, you do the Carl from Family Guy like uh, scene where you're like, we got to talk about every scene, man. I mean, I, I could. It's no, we, we, t- we totally can't. Um, I mean, that maybe you can de- uh, deconstruct. You can deconstruct every scene. Not until we finish, you know, with, the, with the panelists. So, oh, sure. uh, <laughs> last, last and always least, because... Fair. You know. That's fair. Hobbit yeah. is our host, uh, the Hobbit guy over there. This uh, fucking yeah. guy. This least, fucking guy. This least, guy over here. Least in height and yes. least in valuable information to share. Plenty of information to share. But you've got the voice. But you also I, have the most dad jokes. 
You do. Uh, have, do people actually, have been beating him in that though. Yeah, yeah, the past couple, there's been some zingers that I wish I could claim. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, right. You bring the like, heart, Hobbit. That's what you. Is bring. that? I'm I'm the worst planeteer. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Where's God your damn it. Where's your monkey? <laughs> yeah. Isn't he also the shortest of the group? I yeah, mean, not I think that, so. You know, yeah. just a coincidence. But yeah, right. All right, well, I know what our group Halloween costume is going to be this no. year. No, oh, fuck Hobbit, off. Hobbit, you, you pump the blood into it. Oh, is that what it That's is? What it is. You, right. you like the Viagra of the going. podcast. Yeah. <laughs> you give us all hard odds. <laughs> you just, you that'll just be call on, you boner. That'll be on the bottom of my headshot is like, I get dicks hard. <laughs> Thank you guys so much yet again for joining us. Oh, God. That, <laughs> geeks on that, to, that means being created. Moist. Too hard. I am uh, Mike the Hobbit Bigot, host of this shit show. Thank you guys so much for listening. You can find me on Twitter at Mike Bickett or follow the Geeks Under the Influence Twitter at GUI Podcast RVA. You can also follow all of our social media stuff, articles written by panelists, episode releases, both of this podcast and uh, the weekly precap that we do as well as several podcasts that should be coming out in the near future Yay. by going to GUIpodcast.com. It has all that info there, has all sorts of cool shit and also, you know, pictures of us, uh, information about some of your favorite panelists. So check it out. GUIpodcast.com. Now, before we get into Spider-Man, first off, let me say, we're going to talk a little bit non-spoiler at the first part. So uh, if you haven't seen it yet, I'll let you know when the spoilers come into play. So if, if there's spoilers, they're super minor spoilers. They're not nothing that you're going to get too like willy nilly about. Um, when we first start talking about it, I will announce in drastic degree when we get into the spoiler heavy aspect of, uh, of this episode. But first we got to talk about our sponsors, Loot Crate. First yeah. off, Love um, oh man, Love I've got from last month, talk about Spider-Man. Alter this Egos. Is, um, that's awesome. Alter Egos, this amazing. Oh, dude. So badass. I love it. That would be a great Halloween costume. It's so yes. good. It's a, it's a black and white Spider-Man hanging upside down a, a Q-pop figure. Fantastic. Yeah. This month is animation with stuff from Ninja Turtles, Bob Burgers, uh, Rick and Morty, and, uh, oh, what's the other one? Oh, shit. Um... Damn Futurama. It. Futurama, yeah. Yes. Futurama yes. is the other one. So, I mean, win. Huge win. Yeah. On and this mine's crate. chipped, so I think. No. No, no, no. I got, money came out. Yeah, money, 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 money definitely came out, came yeah. out the other day. Yeah, so that's I'm, what it I'm is. really looking forward to this one. So if you're not familiar with Loot Crate, basically it's a monthly subscription box, a present to yourself. So you don't have to wait until your birthday or Christmas to get some cool shit in the mail. You can do it just by going to lootcrate.com through the link at GYPodcast.com. That's important. That's how we get credit for you signing up for Loot Crate. When you sign up you save three in the coupon code to save three bucks off your first crate. So it ends up being about 16, 70 bucks, uh, 17 bucks for your first crate. After that, it's uh we're about 20 bucks, but it's well worth it. There's usually a t-shirt, which that itself is about the price of the crate. Cool, cool. Uh, Q pop figures, comic books, pins, uh, shit. There was a star Wars coloring book uh, mm, in, yeah. in the last one. Yeah. It ends up being anywhere from 50 to $60 worth of stuff. In my opinion, oh, if yeah. I'm rough estimate. And yeah, that coloring book was beast mode. We're talking like the adult coloring books where they're, one picture would take you like four hours to color. Yeah. Like it, it's yeah. Awesome. Yeah, it's yeah. It's, it's like nice <laughs> worth, glossy pages and beyond every penny. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. So yeah. definitely check out Loot Crate, but make sure you go through GYpodcast.com on our friends and sponsors page in order to uh, sign up. And uh, next sponsor, our longest running sponsor is amazon.com where we've gotten, Pentagon. I don't know what that was. Don't look at me like that. Low down. <laughs> Sound uh, like you were trying to do Expedia, but fucked up, you know, Expedia.com. No, uh, no. Although just... Expedia, if you want to, no, we're fine. We're good with Amazon and Loot Crate. <laughs> good um, talk. Good talk. <laughs> Amazon.com is where we've gotten most of the equipment for the podcast. Everybody shops Amazon, but the best way for you to do it to help out this podcast is to go through the link at the top right corner of the main page of GOIPodcast.com. Click on that link, bookmark it. Anytime you use that bookmark, uh, it will give us credit for anything that you purchase on Amazon. So it costs the same for you, but we get credit and it helps us get better equipment uh, so we sound better. You can hear dick jokes much clearer um, just by signing up. Uh, or buying stuff on Amazon like you would anyway, yep. but through the link at GUIpodcast.com. So check it out. Two birds. Yeah. Clear your cookies first. Yeah, clear your cookies. Make sure that everything um, everything goes through correctly. But Because uh, I look so forward to tossing them. All right. Well, on that note. <laughs> all right. <laughs> So we've got a few m points that we want to hit on that are spoiler free. This part is still spoiler free. Uh, and then we'll get into the spoilery stuff after this. But first up is uh, actors. I mean, yes. who really killed it? Actors who killed it. Um, I've got to go with there's two big ones for me. Um, I, I will say, actually, pretty much all the actors 
did a phenomenal job, but the two that went above and beyond for me were Tom Holland and Michael Keaton. Um, without going into spoilers, oh, well, when we get into spoilers, I'll have, I'll have more reasons for why both of those were amazing. But Tom Holland did a, 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 just a great job of being this, you know, this 15 year old who has amazing secret and is trying to still have a normal life while, you know, he's trying to balance all that. Um, so he's got the whole coming of age, uh, not, you know, he's got like one friend, you know, he's just, he's still, it's an awkward teenager mm -hmm. who's got this huge weight on his shoulders. And he's also already been attached to this massive thing called the Avengers. Like he's got mm -hmm. all this awesome stuff going on in his life. And Tom Holland really just nailed every emotion out of the park. Absolutely. Dealing with that. Michael Keaton, really, he didn't take place until about, it really became badass Michael Keaton about three quarters into the movie. Without going into spoilers, we'll talk about it later. Uh, there's a scene that happens, and then from then on, we're getting like hardcore <laughs> yes. badass Michael Keaton. What a great Before that, scene. honestly, anybody kind of could have played the vulture part because they didn't really write him to be like this amazing shit, you know. But that one scene forward was Michael Keaton at like some of his best work. Okay. Yeah, in my opinion. Well, the, the one thing that I've seen from Marvel, and it's a regular complaint from the Marvel movies especially, not necessarily with Netflix. Netflix, uh, Marvel, they tend to do really good villains. Mm -hmm. But a lot of the villains for the for the Marvel movies are kind of meh. Like, if you think of uh, Eccleston's character in Thor The Dark World, does anybody even remember the name of that character? I mean... No. He, who's a non-event. It was really not even that important. The, the real character that people think of is uh, Loki. Right. Yeah. Which is great. But Loki's right on that fence. You know, he's he's the brother of Thor. It's it's a different kind of dynamic. So it's not like he's also very much the politician, you know, he's oh, the super smile yeah. to your face and stab you in the yeah. back and get what I want after the fact. Absolutely. He but literally did that. <laughs> yeah. literally. I mean, he, and he chopped a hand off. He did a lot of shit. Yeah. I feel like Vulture is a good example of that. Marvel can have decent villains yeah. right, in their films. You know? Yeah. I mean, I have to say that uh, Vulture I have to agree with you that it was kind of one dimensional until a certain there was turning point or points. I, I I would say, you know, like almost like a descent into madness, Basically. which was kind of cool to watch. Um, although I, I couldn't help. There was a movie that he did called, I think it was called extreme measures. Yeah. And uh, no, yeah. Extreme measures where there was a, a, one of the, you know, characters, son or something is kidnapped and he can help him find it or something along those lines, but Michael Keaton's character's in prison and he like, you know, fucking weight lifts with gallons of water. It's it's kind of goofy, but he basically, if you watch that film, like that's really all he tapped into. Like he didn't have to tap into much. No. Uh Birdman, different story, but this, like, this was a straightforward, kind of one dimensional character, but he made it more than it anyone else probably could have. Yeah, and I I'd, I'd have to agree with you uh, completely like I, I think that he did a phenomenal job with that it, it, especially when he turned that corner that you were when he broke bad you know what i'm saying yeah. like <laughs> no but it, it, even bad. even piggybacking on that like extreme measures where he he did that but also he's done the complete like creeper part too like in pacific heights where he played that yeah like, just mm -hmm. completely deranged tenant that just Which we get some of that would too not go. we did totally got some of that you know um so i love that character um, I love the pick that they had for Aunt May. Yeah, because you know, Aunt yeah. May, yes. you know, whether it was Rosemary Harris or or Sally Field, yeah. you always saw Aunt May. She was old. She wasn't this attractive. Woman. She was not a sex figure. No, yeah. at all. And they totally make her a sex figure. And it totally bothers Peter. Yes, and, that's awesome. <laughs> and it should. It bothers <laughs> my Peter. Oh. 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 But see, what I do like about uh, kind of younging up uh, Aunt May a little bit and making her kind of a sexier Aunt May is not only is it, you know, Marissa Tomei, so raw. Yeah. Exactly. But, uh, <laughs> Please cool. don't ever do that. Yeah. No. Yeah. Please don't do that. Yeah. Yeah. Fair. Fair. My Peter's sad now. But also, <laughs> he went to sleep. Speaking of Peter, uh, I think the age works better for a teenage Peter Parker that she's the right age to be the aunt of Peter Parker. If you're looking Aunt May, she's like a senior citizen. Uh, a lot yeah. of the time, which doesn't actually match up age wise for a teenage Peter Parker. And no. it's like they had a kid really old, you know, mm -hmm. uh, which is possible. Sure. But, you know, this just makes a little bit more sense. Not only that, but if you have an Aunt May that's always sitting around the house uh, being old, uh, watching old fucking Matlock reruns and shit, then, and, you know, it's knitting. not 
She's it's got not, that one piece of like really good advice at some point during the movie, and after that, it's pointless. She's like, she's have pointless. a have a Werther's, Peter. You know, yeah. like it's not it's not find the hope within yourself and have a hard is, candy. It's just a really like wholesome family environment that really backs up why you know Peter has such a good head on his shoulders. Which you still get that from how hard Aunt May is working, you know, to make sure that he has the best life possible, but. She's more involved. She's more of a, a involved character in this whole process than just sitting around the house making fucking casseroles. Agreed. Yeah. Um, no, I completely agree. And uh, what's cool, you know, they're very smart and strategic. And unlike, you know, when they're building this universe, they they had to think obviously way ahead. You know, phase one, two, and three, and they worked around that construct and and filled in the holes. And with this, is they knew if it went well, they would need to make more. The problem with making a lot of those movies in the past is that when you had something like that, that the, they already were old when they played them. They were probably in their mid twenties to to thirties. Mm -hmm. So by the time they got to the third film, they looked literally like t fifteen years older than their actual character, yeah. regardless of makeup. And now they realize if we go back, if we st actually start with somebody who's young enough, and and uh, you know, then they they can then build up to that the more stereotypical view of that character mm -hmm. you know and how you perceive them and how they look in comics and it's really intelligent that they have their their mechanics of how they work that out i think are uh are, are brilliant they've changed the industry yeah so like even when they started with iron man you know you could tell that they obviously i guess unaged tony stark like the earlier mm -hmm. shots when he's clean shaven and he's like right out of like preps well not prep school out of ivy league oh, yeah. ivy league education um they didn't have to go back and like just redo the, all, all that stuff like post production and all that. They could just be like, okay, we can just we can film this right from the start because mm -hmm. this kid's literally a teenager. He's not a thirty year old who's playing a teenager. No, no. and he nailed it. But uh, but speaking of like the the characters and everything and kind of um, how this film was developed, uh, this is a superhero movie, right? So there's yeah. going to be a fair amount of action in here, but this wasn't a nonstop balls to the wall action film it had its moments definitely like it definitely had very solid action sequences but as far as the balance goes with the action you know do we think that it did it justice uh, uh the mechanics of the actions in a marvel film uh and they there's plenty of videos out there that show it you know they're very um they're all they're very big you know they're very wide winter soldier probably one of the best fight scenes ever mm -hmm. is between him and the winter soldier and they're and they're you know Romanoff is under the bridge. She shoots, and they get into it. Like that fight scene is so intricate, and there's so much thought put into it that, although awesome, may not you know maybe take away a little bit. But when you go to this movie, they they were just like everything that he does. If it's not for fun, you know, it's because he put himself in that situation, and they didn't overdo it. Like it was necessary. Why there was action? It was literally. It was literally. Uh, but it didn't have to show him as a badass. It just showed him as a guy who cared, you know, yeah. not someone who was the greatest fighter in the world. Yeah. And that was cool. Plus it, it progressively built him up. Okay. You didn't see him start off with some huge fight or anything like that. He like a wrestling match. Correct. Like a wrestling match against a professional wrestler or anything like that. But what <laughs> oh, you do yeah. see is you see him start out very low key. All right. You can see, you know, obviously they, they, uh, they start out with you know something very very small, and then they build it up to the action that we see at the end. Yeah. So you see that you see another smaller but more large scale, and then you see something that's even larger than that before it gets to the finale where it's just a phenomenal. Just. <laughs> so it's it's a good it's just a good way to. It wasn't just... it wasn't an explosion in your face of action. No, it was it was no. a very good build up. There was enough. Yeah, there was enough. Um. And I would say, yeah, it does build, but I feel like it it kind of builds, and then it would throw in a small snippet, and then it would go bigger, and then throw in another small snippet, and then mm -hmm. go bigger. Like, it wasn't, like, just constantly getting bigger. It would, like, back up just, a, like, a step, and then go, like, three forward, then back up another step, and then go three forward. You know what I mean? Like, they kind of bounce back yeah. and forth. But there was enough story and dialogue um, in between... To where, you know, like you said, it wasn't just an explosion of action. It wasn't a fucking Michael Bay movie yeah, where right. you're just, you know, orgasm of action. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It's like kick butt, plot points. Kick butt, plot points. Yeah. <laughs> no. Well, I think what helped 
as far as the pauses in between the action for this film, at least, is the fact that it gave more gravitas to the fact that this is a kid. That this yeah. is a kid that this is not a normal thing for him. This is something that's always only happened in the past, you know, few months for uh, for like, Spider Man for Peter it? Parker. It's not even that's like seven months probably in the time frame. Maybe six yeah. months in Eight. Civil War, and then that has to have been like after he came back. He literally came back right after Civil War, so six months. Yeah, well, so, so I think it said, like, on the screen, it was actually, like, yeah, eight months, six months, eight months. Yeah, later. so, yeah, I mean, it's not even a year at this point that he's been living this kind of larger life, um, and then he gets pushed back into, where you know, saving, you know, people from purse, snas- purse snatchers and bike thieves and shit like that. And <laughs> car thieves. Car thieves and stuff. <laughs> um, that... Uh, He's he, so when the bigger moments happen, he's jazzed as shit about it, but also super inexperienced with it. And those pauses in between where he gets to reflect on those moments are important. Yes, that's an excellent point because the action, uh, I was figuring out a way to describe it earlier. It's very intimate, mm-hmm. and that that's very different than most movies, especially in Marvel, where it's very big and it's you know it's amazing, well choreographed, um, and thought out. But this was intimate because you were you were almost inside of his head. You know, it was almost like Scrubs meets <laughs> Spider-Man with, especially with, you know, the girl who said like, go for it, Peter. Like, that's your conscience right there. Like, it was just so intimate. And I thought I really appreciated that. So maybe that's a John Hughes thing. What you're know. saying is that Peter Parkey dr- drinks uh, Apple Teenies. Is what <laughs> yeah. you're saying? Hey, maybe it makes him feel fancy. Although I would love to see like a, a Zach Braff Spider-Man. Like, that would be fantastic. Oh, that like, would be he's like aged a, out a bit. That would be but, a funnier die thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But uh, one thing I also want to cover, we talked about the actors that portrayed uh, the, the characters in the movie, but the characters themselves, I mean, the the writing is so important in a movie like this so that it doesn't seem two-dimensional, you know? Right. You need to have these characters well fleshed out, especially something like Spider-Man, where we've seen two other iterations with two different two other actors that have portrayed this character in previous uh, series. And now you've got the youngest Spider-Man. He's like 15. Um, and how do you really get that point across that this is a developing teenager that's still dealing with teenager stuff, but is also able to, able to uh, pick up 3000 pounds. And, you know, um, I, I feel like the characters were incredibly well fleshed out. And I think leaning on that kind of that John Hughes kind of tone is what really gave it that gravitas where the kids felt like they were talking like kids. It wasn't like mini adults, you know, they talked like kids did. They asked each other out like kids did. They gave each other shit like kids did, you know, Mm -hmm. and, and the adults spoke like adults. So you had that nice contrast in between. And honestly, I would say personally, as much as I'm a fan of the first two Sam Raimi Spider-Man movies, the character development, the, the, the dimension of the characters, I'd say this is probably the strongest out of all the Spider-Mans that I've seen. I, I was I was going to say that, you know, you know how you could flesh his character out, especially when he's wearing the suit, is to have some random character tell him his voice sounds like a girl. Yes. <laughs> yes. yes. That's Spider-Man. That's how you know. It's still, it's still fucking changing. Yeah. <laughs> I'm almost there. Now, uh, speaking of John Hughes, or... No, no, go ahead. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll pick you back. Speaking of John Hughes, uh, that was a major... Uh, conversation piece with this movie going in is that uh, it definitely leaned on that kind of 80s uh, teen comedy drama tone. And I I absolutely agree. It definitely did. Now, do you think that it leaned on it a little bit too much or was that really kind of the necessary um, like approach to make this movie feel like appropriate for the age group of these, you know, these characters? No, I, I, I thought it was absolutely great. Um, because you have number one, you have kids that are actually closer to the age um, of the characters they're portraying, and then yeah. we talked about outside about the um, the different incarnations of Spider-Man and Peter Parker in the past being well beyond their teenage years, and we've got mm-hmm. a kid now who is actually a teenager. Mm-hmm. Um, so you can you can literally uh, you know relate to it a lot more it's not like watching the breakfast club and watching a bunch of set 20 somethings spend attention i don't know i related you know, to breakfast set. club no uh, i i mean I totally were really, no, I, I completely love the movie don't get me wrong but you still have you know like a 27 year old guy playing uh like a 17 year old kid so yeah you know there's there's still that <clears throat> this completely had teenagers playing teenagers and it was i think yeah uh great testament to number one actually the acting of a teenager and then just their you know just how everything kind of just flowed through it 
uh, I, I, what I appreciated was that they uh, they didn't pander to any specific demographic as far as age or even style, the way of speech. You know, they didn't shorten the words and say Avi and and rents like you know, like they didn't pander to anything. They they wrote it very human uh, and almost like in the the situations and how they spoke about it were almost timeless because if we can pull back in our memories, things like the breakfast club or others movies where I've said, I was saying earlier, it kind of makes you feel that way when you're watching it, which is really good is that it doesn't pander to any specific type of person. It just want, you know, it's very real in those moments. Mm -hmm. That's, that's, that's pretty fucking crazy in a Marvel movie. Yeah. A, uh, and, and crazy in in a Spider-Man movie. That's the thing. This is supposed to be like a fun superhero movie, but right. you're getting actual feels for these characters and mm-hmm. what they're dealing with as teenagers. Just never mind the superhero part of it. Just the interpersonal relationships of being a teenager and all the awkwardness that comes with that. I mean, <laughs> awkward's in space. Oh, super. Yeah, like, <laughs> so it, we're looking at just at overall before we get into the spoiler aspect of it. Uh, we, we're working on a new scale factor for geeks under the influence that uh, we're calling it the ABV scale. Uh, kind of like alcohol uh, by volume for beer, but this is the awesomeness by volume scale, uh, one to ten. So ten being a dick kicker, um, and a one being basically Coors Light. Um, yeah. yeah, just not Pretty worth much. your time. Or yeah, Bud Light or Suicide Squad or Suicide Squad. Yeah, <laughs> would be one. So or a point five. Um, so uh, going around the table, starting with Dan. Oh man. Um, what, at, from <laughs> one to ten on the awesomeness by volume scale what would you give this film um i would have to give it at least an eight and a half and you know i might even be underselling it a little bit there um i i absolutely love this movie now i i think part of the reason that uh i don't rate it as high as i might have on some other films in the past is that number one like i mean i I love spider-man but spider-man it's no it's obviously it's it's uh no secret to anybody here. He's not my definitive favorite as far as you know superhero characters are concerned. He doesn't turn angry and green enough for you. Is that, yeah, that's pretty. Much is it. that pretty much it? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. that's pretty much it. Clean but, cut range. You know, it, it, it was a very solid movie. Uh, the acting was great. I thought the the plot was phenomenal. Uh, very well written, um, and you know everybody I thought did a, an amazing job. Uh, even from like some of just the little background characters that we'll delve mm-hmm. more into here in a little bit. In, in but, just a minute, actually. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, you... Smashy. Uh, so uh, after watching it, I gave it a lot of thought. And of course, you know, recently as I've seen it, Wonder Woman was popping to my head and over the superhero genre just in general and trying to weigh it in that way. And I would say like for what it was trying to be, I'll give it a nine. A nine. a nine. Okay. For what it was Ooh. trying to be. But if I compare it, and this is this is what's it sucks because when I compare it to other superhero movies, such as like Wonder Woman, I may drop it down, but it wouldn't be that much. Yeah, just slightly. But, but what it did and what it tried to be and what it didn't try to be, mm-hmm. I'll give it a nine. Okay. That's fair. That's fair. Uh Lowdown, what are you thinking as far as uh, scale goes? Um I'm giving it eight. An eight? An eight. Solid eight. Okay. Solid eight. So that's pretty good. I mean, you know, eight is no slouch. That's no, eight's, eight's, eight's when it comes, well, in my mind, when it comes to rating, eight's really good. Yeah. Because there are very, very, very few tens. I'm talking like Empire, Dark Knight, like, those, those are, are tens. tens. Yeah. Winter yeah. Soldier, that's yeah. a ten that's, for me. That's a fucking ten. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's Winter Soldier's yeah, a ten. That's pretty I much a ten. So in my, in my, you know, in my system, like, Coming from an eight, that's two points below Empire. You know what I mean? Like that's yeah. that's a solid fucking rating, at least uh, for me. I, coming I, from I, me, I totally give you, you know, that. Because I love the movie. Yeah. It wasn't ten caliber, but I love the fucking movie. Like, and, you know, I really don't have any. See, I don't really have any qualms about it. It's just, I guess, you know, because when we talk about rating, like for us, we're not critics. We're not, you know, we're not. Go looking at it from their standpoint of how a movie's done. We're looking at it from the nerd aspect of what from we want to fucking see, the fan perspective, yeah. what we right. want to fucking see. What brings the joygasm on? Exactly. Yeah. yeah, we talk all day long about things we love and don't love on this podcast. I mean, that's pretty much what we do on this thing. That's the point. But no. <laughs> we, I don't think we, we criticize, but we're not claiming to be critics. No, 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 no. Because I don't. We're coming from a f- perspective of fandom. You know, right. we're not. We're yeah. not coming from a perspective of like you know how it. We're not looking for the like the well, real like. You know, Susan yeah. of the film. We're the, the, uh, the Susan, the you know the the, the je ne sais quoi. 
Oh, it's God. a French word a certain, of the film. I, I don't know what, what? French, what the French call a certain I don't know what. Yes, <laughs> basically, we're, what we're looking at is whether or not it was enjoyable. If we think it did proper justice for the character yeah. that we've come to love for a good majority of our lives. Saturday morning cartoons, baby. Yeah, and comics. Uh, oh God, oh, yes. oh my God, God. I'm a Saturday so morning cartoons. in that regard, we've got an eight point five from Dan, a nine from uh, Smash, an eight. Uh, from uh, Lowdown, and I'm going with an 8.25. So we're all, we're all pretty close to. It's a solid 8.25 is high marks in, yeah. in my opinion. I mean, yeah. that's really good. This stuff is high. Like eight, anything eight and up is high. I mean, that's you know, you got we got a 8.5. You know, yeah. Yeah. because after a that, it, after that, it's just you know minor things. So it's yeah. eight, eight and up, but they're yeah, big eight, to us. Eight to ten is like what we're looking. We're looking at eight to nine. Eight to nine, literally, mm-hmm. right there. Yeah, right yeah. in that scale, and I think that's very valid. There's not a lot wrong with this film. Like, there's nothing that I would ap- actually say is wrong with this movie. There's no. nothing. Like, there's no. maybe minor little nitpicky things that we'll get into here in just a second. Right. But overall, it's a very well put together film. It's a very well thought out film. The number of Easter eggs alone in this Whoa. movie speak Whoa. to the fact that the writers 45. or the writer. Um, speaking of which, the there's writer. Probably, there's probably more hidden ones. Yes, the writer. Oh, yeah. Please drop, yeah, drop yeah, the let's, writer. Let's drop, drop the writer. writer. Uh, for those that are unaware, the writer of. Spider-Man Homecoming was the little brother in Freaks and Geeks. Yep. It's on Netflix. Check it out. Yeah. If you haven't seen it, yes. you, need to, you need to educate yourself. I think our fan base is pretty well versed in Freaks and Geeks. Yeah, if they haven't so. seen it, they're at least aware. But the little kid, the little brother um, in Freaks and Geeks, that is the writer of Spider-Man Homecoming. He was also Mitch, Sam? Mitch in Waiting. Yeah, he, That's he, right. oh, yeah. he was the trainee so he, yeah, in the Waiting. Trainee. But what yeah, was his name? He Sam? shows him the brain. Sam in, in, in Freaks and Geeks. In Freaks and, and Geeks, yeah, yeah. Sam. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, that that's who wrote this he was movie. Also so he in earned Father's Day. He earned his geek uh, credential. Dude, I, I had no idea. <laughs> yeah, like I hadn't looked into any of that. I and when I when, believe when, that when you told he me that Father's Day blew my fucking mind. Yeah, that blew my goddamn mind. Like, that's probably why dude. Martin Starr, who was also in Freaks and Geeks, Is was the, the, the teacher, for the, the, yeah, the, uh, the debate the coach, the debate oh, coach, yeah. decathlon. Oh, the, the decathlon coach. Yeah. yeah. So uh, that's where we stand. Uh, Spoilers. Eight, Spoilers. Yeah. Oh, well, spoilers. That's, that's minor. No, I'm best. talking about going forward. I'm just saying spoilers. Oh, yeah. Let's, let's, uh, and I'll, I'll put some echo. You see this? I'll put echo on my voice in post, but um, dun, dun, dun. Uh, let me be adamantly clear. We are going full spoilers after this point. So if you have not seen the film and do not do not want it spoiled for you, mm-hmm. stop. Go watch the movie. Come back and then rejoin yeah. us. Uh, YouTube's very nice and it will and it will like stop it where you finish listening. Pause. Yeah. Pause. Yeah, just, or just pause. We're the, gonna spoil it's it's it all over French. this room. And you, if you don't want to be a part of that right now, you gotta use that French away. word that means stop. I think it's called pause. Yeah. <laughs> if you're listening to the audio, yeah, you just you just pause it or stop it. Come back. Uh, join us again. And uh, so the next rest of the podcast is. Spoilers! That'll sound way better once I actually like yeah. put Echo, echo on there. Echo, yeah. echo, 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 echo. It'll sound better once you play with it. Yeah. <laughs> Anybody oh, want yeah. a peanut? <laughs> <laughs> All right, flat, so flat. spoilers. I cannot wait to get into this because holy Yay. fuck. Like, Yay! There are there are a number of things in this film that changed drastically from any previous iterations of Spider-Man. And I really want to get into that first because mm. it also carries into kind of like the uh, the Easter eggs and everything like that. But between Marvel Spider Man and Sony Spider Man, um, uh, the the first one I really want to get on because we talked about it a little bit outside before we started. Flash Thompson, yes, yes. very different character from previous iterations. So huge, different. huge, huge difference. And I feel like there's some some slightly different feelings on that. So I'm going to send it over to Dan first. All right, so. Yeah, all right. So in the first couple of movies, you saw Joe Mantel. How do you pronounce that guy's name? The Mantelliano, the big buff werewolf guy from yeah. True Blood. That's also friends with Pee Wee Herman. Yeah, yeah. What is, yeah, yeah. but he's also a Penguins fan, so we got to give him yeah, complete fair. credit for that. That's fair. And he's married oh, to Sofia Vergara, so the yeah. guy gets like so many. Points. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but obviously, he was he was the big the big brooding bully in you know the first couple of Spider Man movies. Um. You know, then they bring in when they do the Amazing Spider-Man. They bring in another guy that you know he's not huge by comparison to to Joe, but he is still a relatively large character. And he's that bring, jock personality. Yeah, he's that yeah. jock persona. And then you bring in this other like Indian kid that you know, and 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 you know, uh, he's basically roughly the same size as Peter Parker. Mm-hmm. So there is seriously no physical intimidation that I can sense just from looking at this kid. 
that like where I would go like, oh shit, <laughs> this guy's going to kick my cl- my ass like after class. There's nothing there. No, his dad will sue you or something. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like the, the thing about the, like this character, obviously compared to the last, like the, the differences were very big. You know, they didn't try to hide it. Like we're going to make a flash Thompson that that's more of like a mental torturer you know, versus a physical one, which is cool. You know, the only reason for Flash Thompson in the original Spider-Man was to show the the evolution after being bit, you know, like for Peter Parker's powers. He didn't realize how fast he could move or, you know, or anything like that. That's the only point of that scene. Mm -hmm. That was the only mechanism. That's what they used to propel him into using his powers more. In this one, Flash Thompson was really that asshole dude from like Revenge of the Nerds with his fucking pop collar. Who, <laughs> who's like, he's the smallest dude in the group, but he's like the leader. You know, he's got the little man complex. And that's what he had. And he knew Peter Parker was smarter than him, probably better looking, but he had fucking money. And that's all. And that was kind of a cool way to go about it. He was Joe Pesci in Goodfellas. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. yes. He didn't stab anybody in the neck yet. But um, that was off screen, casino. maybe. Off like, screen. Yeah. yeah. His agent. But yeah, no, I, I agree. Like what we got with this flash was uh, for me, one of the biggest differences was we got a flash that was literally in the same click as him. There was no there was no difference as far as stature in school, as far as jock or blah, blah. He was in the same click. You know what I mean? And the only difference that made him cocky was he just had a sense of entitlement. Mm-hmm. And that was the biggest difference for me. Well, yeah, and they they made more of a focus on the fact that they all went to you know this midtown tech school. Yeah, that you know, like everybody that that was there was going to be a smart kid anyway. Right. So you know, Peter was definitely like in his own separate thing. It wasn't there. just a normal high school. No, it wasn't just you know what was portrayed in the other ones where he was like this dumb jock character. Well, jocks aren't even jocks anymore. Like no. th- that character, that Flash Thompson would be the jock of this generation well and of that school specifically i mean specifically this, this is a science magnet basically where yeah, like yeah. the smart kids that are into and en- uh, you know engineering and science and all that that's what all these kids are so it kind of evens the playing field to start anyway these are the kids that if they went to like let's say a queen's public school like normal public school would crush would like get the og spider-man they, the they would crush movie. in yeah. in their grades but they would also get crushed by like everyone else like peter parker did in but also, I, I think that's the safe <laughs> that's the safe bullying in this movie, and I think why they went with this kind of Flash Thompson. Y- there was a degree of realism with these kids, and if you put them in a real Queens public school, uh, there would be way too much crack. Uh, there would be way too much like <laughs> too much sex, too much drugs, a lot uh, of Snapchatting, a lot of people with guns, or like or older brothers that are picking them up from school with guns. It, metal detectors all day. This is a mo- yeah metal detectors. It would. have given it a much darker and and rougher tone where this still was able to embody that kind of like original Spider-Man aesthetic of like the different clicks and everything. But it, this is, was, it didn't need to throw stereotypes. It, in there. it didn't need to right. throw in the jock beating up the nerd because that's just not how this works anymore. I mean, no. um, yeah, now, he, now you get bullied on Facebook. Yeah, you and get, you either fight back or kill yourself. You get bullied on Facebook because you're a little bit more awkward than other people. Right. It's not a matter of whether you're smart or not. These kids are all smart, but uh, Flash Thompson, in this regard, was pissed at Peter because it came so naturally to him. He was naturally smart. He he was able to uh, so, so much easier get good grades and um, just to handle his life better. Uh, Flash at this was a smart kid, but he also had to work a little bit harder at it. And that entitlement of that he didn't want to work for anything. It was just given to him. And that gave him an attitude, a shitty little attitude. Right. So I, I think... A modern day Flash Thompson. This is more the bully that you, uh, kids are going to see. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah, you know, in, in my high school, being the uh, the school DJ was not the cool thing to do. Okay. <laughs> no, you were an AV club nerd. Uh, yeah, if you were a exactly. DJ, pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> but that was again that that, that was pre millennial era. They, these, I'm sorry, Peter Parker's a millennial now. Everyone's on social media. Everyone goes and sees superhero movies. Like everybody listens to like bands you've never heard of on youtube i mean that's just how it is now i do want to say how and marvel usually is pretty strict with this but the fact they did a movie in high school revolving our changers social media didn't come up social media did not, not come really up. much at all and i enjoyed that and i enjoyed honestly, that a lot. i didn't even think about it till you just said that yeah, it wasn't yeah, that it was wasn't great. even something that clicked because it's, it's not needed they it wasn't needed yeah you're right they didn't mention it and i guess the only real 
call out to social media, although he didn't share it, would be the opening this amazing. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, with, yeah, with where he's video, doing all the yeah. selfies. Videotaping. Like, uh, he's like, oh, check it out. Look, there's Captain America. That yeah. was a call out to like how things are now, of course. You know, that's the standard. But you're right. Like, they didn't necessarily call out Snapchat or Facebook or whatever the case yeah. might be. Mm. Yeah. He wasn't tweeting the whole time. He was during the Civil War stuff. You know, right. he was making a video. You know, that would have, yeah. that would have, I think that would have damaged the, what they were trying to do in the film had they started, in, you know, integrating exactly. that. I, and I, I liked, but some movies do force. The current state, you know, the current situation. The current situation amongst teenagers is fucking social media shit. Oh yeah, I mean, adults are crazy with it. Like, but t- teenagers, whoa, man, yeah. He should have had his uh, Peter Parker <laughs> playing with a fidget spinner. Like, at his desk. <laughs> I'm actually shocked that we didn't see one of those in there. I think yeah. when this came out or the production, they were probably already done with filming by the time fidget spinners became a thing because that's how things are. And fads move so quickly yeah, that they can't sure. really keep up to that degree. Yeah, I mean, it's but it's, fads have always been like that. Look at yeah. when we were younger. I mean, they made a comeback, but the slap bracelets, they were in so yeah. for like a year or two in the 90s yes. that went away and then they came back. I mean, the fucking trapper keeper, you know, the what I mean? fucking like, trapper was, keeper. Oh, there's so many things that come and go quick that we remember from our childhood. But if you really look at the timeline that we actually probably use that shit wasn't very long. It's like not at all. No, because it seemed like it was such a longer period for us. Well, a know, day it might as well have been like three days, depending on what yes. you're doing as a kid. I don't know. I'm really excited because me undies right now has cross colors undies right now. I, I'm yes, super fucking that. excited about it. I will rock those cross color undies. I'm thinking about getting a pair because no, that's funny as shit. I thought you wanted to get the adult underwears. I mean, you, you had said something about No, that. I definitely want this, too. Like, yeah. I want to up my underwear game. You hear that, me undies? Because I know you sponsor fucking podcasts. I'm talking to you. <laughs> I want to up my underwear game. Give me a reason. Just give me a fucking reason. All right. So, um, password we'll get a skids. membership. You give us a reason. <laughs> yeah. um, I, I want to touch on one other character that's a major uh, variation, uh, deviation from previous films before we get into the break here, because that's where we're at at this point. Oh, wow. Oh, like, wow. Oh, really? Yeah. Hey. Yeah. Um, is MJ, Mary Jane. Uh, oh, is no, not Mary Jane yes. at all. No, not at all. Not at all. Nope. It's, uh, this Mich- right here? Yeah, Michelle Johnson or something her name was? First of all, she's smart. Okay. Oh, yeah, she's <laughs> Yeah, Mary really Jane smart. is, a, uh, you know, kind of... She, d- d- yeah. Fall, shouldn't fall <laughs> Which, back on her you know, you know, Kirsten Dunst nailed the original <laughs> kind of oh, yeah. down. Um, obviously, she doesn't have naturally red hair, but, mm. that you know, that's beside the point. But, um, yeah, this one, I thought was was perfect you know she actually connected with peter on an intellectual level um and you don't really get to see that a whole bunch until the end when you're kind of like you have the aha moment Mm -hmm. you know right and i know we briefly talked about side i love that the um what was really genius was that they didn't even hint towards anything i mean every now and then you might get a glimpse from this this you know this girl is just the you you know just shows up out of nowhere and then they have the MJ, the picture perfect Kirsten Dunst version MJ character, who's not her. Yeah. And the beautiful thing is, we are we are in the spoiler yes, section. Yes, we are in yes. spoiler. spoilers. Yeah. Yes. So for everybody who's still with us uh, at this moment, the beautiful thing was they had her fucking leave. So not only did you make an MJ character who's not MJ, but then you kicked her the fuck out of the school to like another state, like yep. Seattle or something, Oregon. Oregon, and then you, Oregon. yeah, and then you, the, uh, oh, then the MJ character is the most unexpected person, but you could actually see that relationship like blossom. She actually seemed to me more of a combination, really, of Mary Jane and Gwen Stacy, because well, she had, she definitely had the intellect of Gwen Stacy, um, you know, but. In, the ballsiness of Mary Jane. Yes, absolutely. I mean, she she straight up was like, yeah, like flipping them off and everything. Yeah. So, I mean, it was, that was that was awesome. It was great. <laughs> if we're looking back to Mary Jane from the original Spider-Man movies and everything, and and a little bit on the comics as well, one of the reasons why Peter Parker and Mary Jane in the first place had a connection is because they both felt like outsiders. For right. Peter, it was the fact that he was awkward, he was a nerd, and then also had to cover up this whole like weird. I can climb on walls thing that he had going. Whereas Mary Jane came from a kind of messed up family right. where like yeah. where things were screwy. And as much as she was a popular girl, she hid that. On she the hid that. Uh, yeah. She hid that. And she kind of really pushed to be the popular yeah. girl because of what was happening at home and wanted to basically kind of ignore that aspect of her life when she was at school. Um, but 
that relatability between the two was because her walls went down around Peter. She was able to be herself and be yeah, they did. a little broken and and uh, her walls and panties uh, went yes. down. Yes, but that was implied. I definitely see that drop. with this MJ is that this character is a character that openly talked about in the movie about that you know it's not not the best home life. You know she's she's one of those kids that probably along with Peter isn't there because her family has money. She's there because she's a smart lady and right. earned her way on there whether it be either through donations or or just her being she's, she's getting a, a scholarship academics or man she's Academic. a diamond in the rough right yeah now. she's she's a rough and tumble hardcore uh lady that is smart as shit and will be able to give peter a run for his money you give her but, some fucking but you powers. could even you could even see that like in the film you know where she <laughs> You know where he's where, where he he and his friend are basically staring at the one girl in the cafeteria and like you guys are lame. Yeah, you guys are, you guys you guys, are losers. You guys are losers. Yeah, you guys are losers. Or even at the or even at the Washington Monument when she's like acts like she's too cool to to go up. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, like slaves built this. You know? I, love, like, I actually oh, that's love such a that great scene. You know? yeah, it was like, an amazing about scene. This. And he's like, well, that's not true. And you look over the security guard. He's, kind of he's like, like, yeah. 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 And, and kind of yeah, a, and a ballsy scene nowadays, you know, to really pull it, be like, no, no, fuck yeah. Like, I'm not going to do that. That is, I'm still American, but I'm not going to do that. Yeah. That was cool. I appreciated that. Yeah. But what I also liked is that uh, with, with this character, it's, I'm a little conflicted about the the only confliction I have is the name that it's not Mary Jane, but also it kind of had to be a different name in order for it to be the surprise at the end. Right. If she called herself Mary, it's like that's Mary Jane, because you know, that was kind of the the thought process when she got cast in the first place. That might be the Mary Jane character. But then you get that aha moment. <laughs> Sorry, uh, beer. Right. Uh, yeah. So in in a in order to hide it, they had to change the name a little bit, and they stuck with the MJ. So you know. By the end, what that of course, meant. and she looked, gave him that 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 look, yeah, right at the end as he's walking away, and she's like, she gave him the fuck me eyes, but what she did. Well, <laughs> let's not make it too weird. We're still she, just in high school, but yeah, I guess I guess she they, also alluded. She to didn't the fact seem like that though. That um, the 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 love interest in this film just thought that Peter was kind of a dick. Yeah. Like by the end of it, that like stood her up right when her dad was getting arrested for being a supervillain. Um, which, you know, that, that old song and dance. Um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, you know, totally. You know, when, she's a different area code. When, when your dad was Batman and Birdman, and then he's an evil villain that also flies, and you're like, yeah. fuck, dad. But wait, um, when, whenever but, you take care of what's going on with you, you know, mm-hmm. she, that's what she said. She's like, yeah. I hope uh, you figure out what's going on with you, and, you know, you take care of it. Like, I, I really much? I'm good. Your dad's in jail. What the fuck? The thing is, she like, never I, even considered the fact that... Oh, it's super weird that Spider-Man, who's from Queens, where we go to school, showed up on our field trip uh, and Peter to Parker save was kids to from Queens, you know that, and he's never been seen in DC before. Uh, the the MJ, the actual character MJ, even called him out and then like totally threw it off. Just like, what are you trying to hide, Peter? Mm-hmm. And like fucked with him, and he's like, oh <laughs> shit, I don't. And she's like, I don't, I don't, I don't care. I really don't yeah. care. I really don't care. <laughs> but I think she does actually care. She was just fucking with him because she knows something's up. She's yeah. smart. She's mm-hmm. really fucking smart. She's gonna figure out that he's Spider Man, and that might be what develops the relationship in a later Spider Man movie. Is she figures it out while they start hanging out more or something? I you know? do love that scene. Maybe that was a little Easter egg. Is sort of like a, a love for Superman. Yeah. And yeah, uh, you we agreed we with me. Have cool. our fifth Yay! panelist uh, coming in just in What's time up? for us to take our break. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so when we come back, not only are we going to talk about what we are drinking and uh, do a little drunken scene action, but we're yeah. going to have a fifth panelist in. Uh, Mr. Hunter Woo-hoo! is going to be joining us for fuck uh, you, Hunter. For fuck you, a little more Spider-Man action. So stick around. Uh, we'll be right back after the break. Thank you for watching the GUI podcast. This is Nick from Instant Replay Live. I get plugged here a lot, and I'm being allowed to do it myself this time. Uh, I'm going to plug myself as much as I can. You can check out our Twitter at INST Replay Live. I'm going to plug myself again. I'm plugging myself in front of all these guys right here. You can find us on YouTube if you search for Instant Replay Live or YouTube.com slash C slash Instant Replay Live or at InstantReplayLive.com. We do video games. We do tabletop role-playing games, and we do re- reviews and all kinds of other stuff. So check us out. Toski from the YMM Podcast, big fans of the Geeks Under the Influence. Talk about all the same shit, so definitely check us out, ymmpodcast.com. 
This is Mike the Hobbit, direct from Fallout on a trivia night, telling you to come here every first and third Monday for trivia between 8 and 10, 25 cent wings, drink specials, prizes, and tons of really inappropriate trivia. It's a lot of fun. Do you guys agree? (laughs) Definitely come out and enjoy trivia every first and third Monday at Fallout. In addition to Fallout, Geeks Under the Influence takes over Wonderland on the corner of 18th and Main Street for Geeks Under the Influence trivia, ridiculous trivia, goofy music, great food, cheap drinks, 1727 East Main. Come and check us out, 8 to 10, every second and fourth Tuesday. We are back for the second half of Geeks Under the Influence, episode 110, all things Spider-Man, especially Spider-Man Homecoming. Thank you guys for joining us for the second half. As you know, we always end up going off the rails on our second half of Geeks Under the Influence, and there's no better way to start that than talking about what we are drinking. Hey, we're fucking drinking. We're getting drunk. You want to know? Well, here you go. Hey! <laughs> God damn it. Did you, uh, did you write Every that yourself? Every time, dude. Do what? Did you write that yourself? No, no, that was just Kyle come, going off that the cuff. Improv. And, uh, improv. <laughs> <it>. <laughs> improv. Improv. <laughs> yeah. Classic, you know, today. Jazz hands. Uh, I, oh I don't know God. if we've discussed this with Kyle, but we're going to be getting some new koozies here in the near future, and it made uh, perfect sense. For the back of the koozie to have the GY logo on the front, <laughs> and then hey, we're fucking drinking <laughs> from the back. On yes, the back half, so so um, awesome, so good. So yeah, stay tuned for that. We're uh, gonna have that available at all trivia nights, and also uh, hopefully we'll have the store on GY Podcast going uh, for online sales as well of that once we get it printed up, which hopefully should be in the next month. No, or that so. would make a good shirt design. Just a big GUI logo on the front center, and then hey, and we're hey, fucking hey, drinking we're on the fucking back. Drinking, yeah, <laughs> that'd be pretty badass. Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah, and we oh, know it guy. feels so we know terrible. Like exactly. I couldn't wear that at work. Oh no. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've been debating about geeks under the influence stickers because we definitely need those. Just that new logo stickers. That's the new logo is great, but that's also not something you want to put on the back of your car. Why not? Under the influence, maybe not the best thing to put on the back of your vehicle. As long yeah. as just GUI is all they really need to see. Yeah, that's what you I'm... You got to get real close to the bumper to see. The, maybe. Uh, that is true. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, It's not like cops carry magnifying And if glasses. a cop's going to stop you, they didn't see that first, so... Yeah, that's true. All right, so what we are drinking oh, is uh, is the subject at hand. Mr. Dan Man... Dan the Man, Danimal, Dan Witch. <laughs> is that... Um, the the man of many mother of dragons um was, <laughs> was That's nice a new one. was nice enough to bring us a little tasty treat what did you bring us to sip on this evening all right so i brought a uh a new one that i saw uh from the great divide brewing company out in denver colorado trust me if you ever make it out to denver this is a uh, brewery you need to hit up first if you're not busy getting stoned all the time that's <laughs> what i was yeah, going to say yeah. if you're not oh, busy getting third, stoned third colorado. Colorado. but uh this is it's, it's a strawberry rhubarb uh, sour ale um, by them. And I got to tell you, man, this thing is quite delicious. It Never is. rub another man's strawberry rhubarb. No. I learned that. Wrong, uh, wrong. DC uh, Marvel, wrong. It, oh, you know, sorry. What's, wrong. what's interesting is that, you know, for, for a sour, because most of your sours are going to see somewhere between 4 and 5%. Yeah, they're very low. As alcohol, far man. as ABV, this is 62 what? So this really? one might sneak up on you a little bit. Oh, that, yeah. That's uh, not that bad. <laughs> but this, like is, this is actually a very solid sour. I, I really like it. Not too sour. Um, um, not too shabby. Not, not not a lot of stank on the back end, which some sours have a problem being too funky sometimes. Really yeah. interesting nose. It's yeah. not funky. No, no. it's not. And it, it is it is quite delicious. I'm glad I have two more bottles out in my car. You should there be. There we go. It's, um, it, is, it is good. <laughs> It and sounds like a fun I actually weekend. got this locally. There's a uh, there's a, a a place over off of Knuckles Road uh, called uh, I think it's Defles Winkle. Where's it off uh, of? It's 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 <laughs> not far from Knuckles and Cox. <laughs> which we discussed on the break. There's there's an intersection of roads called Cox and Knuckles. And if why there isn't a gay bar on that corner by that name Cox and Knuckles, I I will never know. That's perfect. Uh, well, this I know is why, actually this is this is, of of, yeah. this is off of Cox Road over uh, Near over the Blue like <laughs> 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 it's over by the uh, the shopping center with the uh, food line. Like after you cross over sixty four, if you're coming from Innsbruck, um, they've got a great selection of beverages from uh, from beers to wines actually, and uh, they do get some some nice. Um, I guess we could call them distant <laughs> uh, craft brews, which is which is really 
really interesting. So, so not East Coast local. No, this is okay. not East Coast local. Right. This is, you know, but it like tickles your said, tongue. That's for this sure. Is, this is Denver. This is Weed Coast local. Yes, this is Weed Coast <laughs> yeah. local. <laughs> this is this is the uh, the four twenty local. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So this is uh, fair enough. But, but this is a solid brewery. You know, when I was out in Denver last year, I stopped by Great Divide, and um, it's a phenomenal brewery. They've they've got great products that they put out year round. Um, and you know, I can't wait till I go back out there and <laughs> hit that brewery up again. Nice. I'll bring presents. Now, besides <laughs> the uh, the strawberry rhubarb, what else are you drinking on this evening? Uh, I also have the uh, the El Gos, which I've I've brought before. Um, it's uh, obviously it's a ghost, uh, but it's got lime and sea salt. So it's, it's a ghost with, you know, some, I guess, margarita notes to it, if you mm. will. Nice. Okay. So, uh, next up is a, uh, newbie for this, for this episode, uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, on the tail end of the first half, uh, Mr. Fuck you, Hunter decided to grace us with his presence. Um, it's not like he had anything <laughs> better to do this evening. Uh, he was just taking a sweet time. He was definitely not yeah. locked up at the movie theater because Spider-Man Homecoming opened this weekend. It's kicking ass. Yeah. So. Is it doing well? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I figured it as much. Thur- I mean, Thursday night openings already beat Wonder Woman. Yeah. Well, yeah, the, yeah that pre-opened, uh, I think, did like 15 million, which is better than Jesus Wonder Woman and a couple Christ. of the other ones. So Really? Yeah. Yeah. They're expecting uh, better numbers. With, like, I think they were a little cautious, and I think they did like 100 million, and now it's like 120 is what they're it's, forecasting. It's going to impressive. It's gonna knock some dicks yeah. in the dirt. Yeah. Well, I think mm-hmm. word of mouth is what's going to help this movie. You know, oh, absolutely. You, most of the other movies this summer, word of mouth is actually hurt hurt them with the exception of wonder woman mm-hmm. this is actually going to help the movie i think this and uh baby driver like the two where word of mouth can extend its run baby driver i need to see that saw uh, some so some post about uh some of the superhero movies this year specifically and there hasn't really been a disappointing superhero movie in 2017 you got no. logan you've got um wonder woman you've got um I mean, homecoming. Spider-Man. Now we do have <laughs> near the end of the year with a uh, Zack Snyder. Uh, yeah, going yeah, on. we so might have a major. We might get a little down. too cocky talking about yeah. how good this year's been with. Don't forget movies. Guardians, man. Hey, no, it's don't forget uh, Josh Whedon's uh, knuckles and cocky. That's right, uh, knuckles, knuckles and cocky. cocky. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 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 Fucking <laughs> stupid dick. All right. So, Hunter, what are you drinking on this evening? Um, still celebrating the uh, the uh, <laughs> birth of our nation with some uh, red, up. white, and blue. Uh, Pabst Blue oh. Ribbon, just uh, America. That's all I have to say. Okay, America. Fuck yeah. <laughs> Seriously. Uh, next up is the smashiest of the smashies, Mr. Kyle. What are you drinking on? Um, uh, uh, Loon and Kugels or Line and Kugels? <laughs> Line and Kugels. Line and Kugels. Line and Kugels. Line and Kugels. Thank yeah, you very much. German, yeah. This isn't yeah. a fucking calculus test. Like, <laughs> I, I don't he, know. Well, this is the first problems. time I've actually really had this. Uh, this is their grapefruit shandy. Okay. Um, I never had it. A friend of, uh, well, my sister-in-law's boyfriend brought it over and I'm not big into like fruity type you know, out beers or whatever the case might be. I heard. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> Watch your mouth. No, Over he's into Cox fruity bears. Yeah. It's different. It's not the same. <laughs> yes. Care bear stare. <laughs> the care bear something. <laughs> 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 uh, care bear rim. <sighs> Focus. Yeah. Uh, rim job yeah. uh, Grapefruit Shandy Really? <laughs> Look, I think everybody got that That was the reference oh, Wow <laughs> When he said rim What he meant was rim job Thank yeah. you Thank you Kyle I yeah. bet you there's some motherfuckers out there Who didn't Didn't snap on him right away Is that, is that, is that a Pacific Rim reference? I don't understand <laughs> uh, Anyways uh, It's quite delicious It's got It's kind of got a weird uh, smell to it. Uh, I think that's mostly the grapefruit. I'm not big into grapefruit. That's what she said. <laughs> <laughs> you need to drink more grapefruit, is what she said. Right. Yeah. It smells uh, like moldy cheese. <laughs> the cheese is old and moldy. Again, off the rails in the second half. Okay. okay. Uh, so, uh, but this is my first time having it, and I actually I steered away from it. But as I was leaving the house, I didn't have time to stop. So I, I, you know, I grabbed those out of the fridge and then I had the first one. I was like, holy fuck, this is, this has been sitting in my fridge for like two weeks and I haven't, I haven't even tried it. It's refreshing. It's, it is refreshing. Yeah. Just like homecoming is. Oh, oh. I, I like that. You tried to find a way to like, segue, segue, <laughs> segue. You tried. Yeah. You tried. Yeah. It was, it was, it's, it's cool. cool. Cause that movie, so that movie was refreshing. It was definitely refreshing. Like uh, a speaking cool of, glass of grapefruit chanting. Speaking of refreshing, uh, the most refreshing of our panelists this evening, uh, 
Uh, the sexual chocolate is not drinking sexual ch- chocolate tonight. What are you drinking? I wish. Um, well, I got some Danimal in my mouth. Uh, the strawberry You're rhubarb welcome. is tasty. Yes, <laughs> thank you very much. Sexual white chocolate. And um, other than that, I've been drinking on Bell's Brewing, uh, Bell's Brewery's Oberon. It's an American wheat ale. It's a perfect summer beer. Um, yeah, it's kind of it's kind of like my staple every summer. Uh, they're a great brewery out of Michigan. Uh, I mean, they've got the pool time ale as well mm-hmm. with the Which cherry. Is fun. It's basically Domino. like this: the wheat ale with cherry juice, and mm-hmm. it's oh, yeah. that's so really good. good. So okay. yeah, Bell's Brewery. You haven't tried them? Try them. Yeah, Bell's Brewery is solid. And uh, finally, I'm, I'm, I'm also uh, putting some Dan in my mouth this evening. Um, so so he's getting a whole lot of play, dude. Uh, it, it's actually figure. like the more it sits a little bit, it it seems to really it kinda, opens up. It yeah. opens up a lot. Yeah. But in addition Just to that, like um, in honor of uh, <laughs> in honor of Donald Glover's character in uh, Homecoming, he seemed to be living the high life, as in he seemed really high uh, in his scenes no in shit. that movie. Oh so God. in honor of that, I'm drinking the Miller High Life. Um, that's totally planned out. That's not uh, making up bullshit to justify no, my not at, all. not at all. Not, not at all. It's not all. like you no. had that sitting in your fridge from like last week or something, you know? No, like, it's not. It's not at all. Um, we appreciate that. Uh, it's the first time I've had <laughs> High Life on this uh, podcast. Uh, definitely not like three quarters of the episodes. <laughs> uh, more than three quarters, I think. <laughs> you think? Yeah. You think? I'd, say, I'd say a good 80%. Okay, well. Um, so, yeah, that's what I'm drinking on tonight. And that's, uh, that's about it, right? Yeah. yeah. Cool. I'm good. I do have a can, a twenty four ounce of Mickey's in the fridge that I was thinking of pulling out for. Oh, uh, dude, you got to buy those in the bottles. Yeah. Please don't pull it out. No, it upsets man. Me. They're growing up, uh, definitely of age, definitely not underage. Um, I want to definitely not uh, eighteen. Um, there were Mickey's Big Mouth forties mm-hmm. in on the West Coast. Out here, there's Mickey's Ice, and now they have the Mickey's thirty two ounces. But they don't have the Mickey's 40 big mouths. The, the, the grenades are still the best. The grenades are great. All right. I mean, yeah. that's still, of course, you have to already be wasted <laughs> to be able to enjoy that. But that's beside the point. Yeah. All right. So that is what we are drinking this evening. Now on to the fun part, making a drunken scene. I'd have to drink. Making a drunken scene. Was that Sean Connery? <laughs> no, no, that was Drunk? me. Being, that was me trying to do uh, the millionaire from uh, Gilligan's Island. That's, uh, that's what I was going for. Look what you did, but Thomas Howell. Was that? Yeah. Him? yeah. Look what you just did. You put a yeah. little more emphasis on that. That was totally Sean Connery. Was it? Yeah. So uh, we we decided to go with a scene from each different iteration of Spider Man on uh, on this drunken scene. So we've got stuff from Captain America: Civil War. Because I looked for dialogue from Homecoming, and there's just isn't a whole lot out. You know, it's a new movie, so yeah, it's just people trying to remember what people said on IMDb, and it's just some of it's like you got that wrong, <laughs> <laughs> you got that super wrong, terribly. They're like incorporating two different scenes together in one dialogue, and it's like, no, I'm not, I'm not doing this. So, Captain America: Civil War, the the first appearance of Spider Man in his outfit in Marvel. Uh, then we've got Spider-Man from 2002, and we've got The Amazing Spider-Man 2 uh. to, to uh, cap it out. So first one up is Captain America Civil War. We've got Tony Stark and Spider-Man. So Tony Stark is going to be played by... Smash. By the Smash. And uh, Spider-Man will be played by... Yo. Mr. Lowdown Brown. <laughs> Yo. All right. Like so what are you going to do, what are you gonna do him as? You. you guys gonna do like straight voices, or are you gonna make some? I'm gonna make something up. Uh, right. Yeah, I'm not doing a straight voice this time. Maybe a little coked out. I uh, really just want to do underoos. <laughs> okay. All right. So whenever you guys are ready, and scene. <clears throat> All right. I've run out of patience. Underoos. Webbing comes down, grabs Cap's shield, and cuffs his oh, hands. Yeah. <laughs> Spider-Man lands on a nearby truck holding Cap's shield. Nice job, kid. Thanks. Well, I could have stuck the landing a little better. It's just new suit. Wait, it's nothing, Mr. Stark. It, it It's perfect. Thank you. Yeah, well, we really don't need to start a conversation. Comprende. <laughs> <laughs> what, is Cap- Spider-Man a teamster? <laughs> like, what's happening right now? Cap- Captain? Big fan. Spider-Man. <laughs> Yeah, we'll uh, we'll talk about it later. Just hey, we're fucking drinking. 
<laughs> Good job. Yeah, all right. All right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that that High is five it. <laughs> Freeze frame. <laughs> <laughs> Had to, if, had to. If Spider Man was from Detroit, <laughs> that's uh, that's what like. It's like superhero and hasn't been the same since they closed yeah. factories down. <laughs> Fuck. Motown left. Yeah. Ford left. Can't find a job. Shit. All we got is fucking Eminem. He <laughs> took her. And down. Kid Rock. Eminem. Kid Rock. Damn Fuck. kids and their rap music. He <laughs> right. took her. He took her. He took her. All right. Spider Man from 2002. <laughs> the. Uh, the Oh, what's his fuck? Um, Toby Maguire. Toby Maguire, Spider Man, is next up. We this is the first time on film on, in a movie that there was uh, the creation of the name Spider Man. Yes. Is, is the scene uh, we've got the ring announcer played by the Danwich, what up? And uh, Peter Parker will be played by Fuck You Hunter. So whenever you guys are ready. All right. So there's a parentheses thing. Okay, I'll I'll do, <laughs> I'll do a thing. All right, I'll I'll do that. On the microphone, announcing to the audience as he walks backwards up the ramp to where Peter is standing behind the curtain. Will the next victim please enter the arena at this time? If he can withstand just three minutes in the cage with Bonesaw McGraw, the sum of $3,000 will be paid to... Gets off the microphone and asks Peter. Hey, what's your name, kid? It's the human spider. The human spider? That's it? That's the best you've got? Yeah. Oh, that sucks. Gets back on the microphone. The sum of $3,000 will be paid to the terrifying, the deadly, the amazing (laughs) Spider-Man. Donald Trump, ladies and gentlemen. (laughs) Donald Trump. It's going to be bigly. It's it's going to be bigly. It's it's going to be yeah, yeah. <laughs> Everybody's saying you can see uh, you, you can see Dan's work on the newest uh, Spider-Man movie coming out next summer. Uh, the Bigly Spider-Man, uh, <laughs> starring Trump. Trump Trump Films presents yeah, the, the Bigly Spider-Man. All right, so that's that's the thing that happened. All right, moving on to the Amazing Spider-Man Two. There's a lot going on on this one. Right? A lot of bad. A lot of why bad. Do I, yeah. Why do I automatically feel like I, you know, a cola entered my system and now I got to shit my brains out for three hours? That's because that's what this film does to people. Oh, and this is the longest right. dialogue of the shittiest. Movie. <laughs> I, <know. laughs> I feel like I have to shower already, and it hasn't even started yet. I just I needed to get the I'm the Rhino part in. So uh, <laughs> he shits all he wanted. There's the NYI news anchor. That is fuck you, Hunter. There's uh. Uh, Aleski's Sedstevich, which is me. That's the Rhino. Um, uh, Jorge's mother. That's me. Is fuck you, Hunter. Uh, the cop is Smash. Mister Smash. Um, then there is Jorge. That's me. And Peter Parker. That's me. That is Lowdown. Wait, Brown. no. So Dan's Jorge's mother. No, I'm Jorge. Yeah, Dan is Jorge. I Who's, have one. I, I have his mother. Line. Oh, you're yeah. Okay. Hunter is Dan's. Mother, no, no. <laughs> talking out the front. Of- and then low down is uh Peter Parker. So, because <clears throat> apparently he's not Spider Man yet. So no, yeah, he's no. just Peter Parker. Apparently, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, it's it's, it's a, no. stupid. These fucking things. Exist. All right, so when Spider Man Two, he's already Spider Man. Whenever we are ready. I'm here live on Park Avenue and 56th Street, where it is a complete chaos. A man in some sort of weaponized armored suit is wrecking havoc on Midtown. I am the Rhino. I told you I would be back. (laughs) As Shvinovich is shooting at the cops, a kid dressed in Spider-Man suit suddenly runs into the middle of the street. Jorge, no. Hold your fire. Everybody hold your fire. (laughs) Everyone Everyone stops shooting as the kid stands in the middle of the street facing Shvinovich. Kid, you got you get. <laughs> Suddenly, she shoots at him, and then he starts mocking the kid. Look, New York, Spider-Man is back. His mother weeps as the police try to stop her from running to get him. <laughs> That's my baby. The kid places the Spider-Man mask on his head. Brave boy. Huh? Does Alaska make scare you? <laughs> <laughs> Fuck As Kvashivich starts stomping towards the kid Suddenly Peter turns up Dressed in his suit Hey Spider-Man 
I <laughs> knew you'd come back. Yeah. Thanks for stepping up for me. <laughs> You're the bravest kid I've ever seen. I'm going to take care of this so you can go take care of your mom. Okay? Oh, Jesus. Are you announcing a boys to men <laughs> song, single on fucking radio? What's happening? All right. Get out of here. Go, go. Who the fuck's narrating? Uh, oh, okay. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> the kid runs off to join his mother as the crowd cheers. A cop hands Peter a megaphone as he faces... <laughs> 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 oh, here we go. You'll fight me! You'll fight me now, yes? <laughs> On behalf of the fine people of New York City and real rhinos everywhere, I ask you to put your mechanized palms in the air. Never! I crush you! I kill you! I destroy you! Do you want me to come down there so you can kill me? Yes. I'll be right there. <laughs> <laughs> Peter sighs and tosses the megaphone away. <sighs> There's no place like home. Steve uh, starts stomping towards Peter. As he starts attacking Peter, Peter swings a manhole cover at him. Ugh. Yeah. And scene. Yeah. All right. uh, you know what first, po when you started doing that fucking voice, <laughs> like, that was probably the worst thing I've ever heard in my life. And I did the German it accent. It was better than your German accent. But all I kept thinking of was the Armageddon scene where he's like, Russian components, American components, all made in Taiwan. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Who, uh, that guy's in, like, everything, that, that actor. Yeah. Oh, he was a John Wick. Yeah, well, or John Wick oh, too. Wait, yeah, no, yeah, but yeah. he was also he was in Big Lebowski too. He was the yeah. nihilist. He I always, was nihilist. I always yeah. remember him in uh, Fargo because he was him and Steve Buscemi yeah, were the two guys. Yeah, but he was the guy who threw the, Steve Buscemi in the uh, the, uh, the wood, wood uh, chipper. Yeah, wood chipper. His best work though had to be as the super weird German in the Volkswagen commercials um, <laughs> yeah. that he did. <laughs> <laughs> So he can play the German. He was on Arrow, too. He was a villain on Arrow. Yes, yeah, he was. He was. Yeah. was he the Rhino? No. no. But I'm pretty sure he had an accent. He did. Yeah. He always has an accent. Yeah. Because he super has an accent. Yeah. You should have totally That's ended like off with Gal Gadot in Wonder Woman where they made everyone from the island yeah, have, have, the same. have an Israeli accent Which because is, she <laughs> couldn't do anything other than but, that. But it's smart. That was that was smart. no that was a that super was smart, smart move. Yeah. No, I'm not mad about it. Yes, I mean, even, best even, not be even Princess Buttercup. <laughs> All right, so back on to a uh, very spoiler-heavy uh, mm -hmm. second half of uh, Spider-Man Homecoming episode of Geeks Under the Influence. I really wanted to talk on this because I, I think this was something that's very different than any of the other iterations of Spider-Man. There is a lot not shown about the backstory of Spider-Man in this um, iteration here. Um, yeah, and I, I, I'm a perfectly okay with that. It's not needed, Um We've had two iterations of Spider-Man already, both going over the backstory, not including endless cartoons, comic runs, like, we don't need it in a film anymore, which is why it's already above Batman v Superman, because, oh, wait a minute, we had to go back through that bullshit all over again. Fucking hell. Yeah, I mean, how many times do we have to see characters die that we know are going to die anyway? It's like, we get it. Uncle Ben dies. Like, I actually had somebody in the theater that was complaining that that didn't happen, and I was like, are you fucking kidding me mm -hmm. he actually he actually said that uh he thought that the original Amer uh amazing spider-man was better because it included the like the whole thing with his parents and <sighs> oh his so... and i was like dude fuck that because quite frankly you know we already know uncle ben's dead everybody that's gone to see this movie already knows that uncle ben is dead we don't need to see this guy get killed a third time honestly most of the comic book movies rely so much on doing the origin or have to do the origin there that it affects the movie. I mean, look, I like Batman Begins, but Dark Knight, Dark Knight totally fucking kills it. X-Men, you had to deal with the origin. X-Men 2, Spider-Man, the first Spider-Man, Spider-Man 2. And when you don't have to deal with re-explaining, at this point, who doesn't know how fucking, what happened to Peter yeah. Parker? I mean, come yeah. on. So in this, in this new one, he goes, yeah, Spider happened. That's all you need to say? Let's get on with the plot. Well, and what I really appreciated is that they didn't even mention Uncle Ben's name through the entirety of the movie. The one moment that it kind of touches on it, it alludes to Uncle Ben when he's talking to his best friend and he says, um, you know, please don't share my identity with people. Um, my Aunt May, she's, you know how hard a time she's had recently, suggesting that Uncle Ben didn't die that long ago. Yeah, he like, says she's been through enough. Yeah, she's been through enough. Where And then... And this was the key thing. The emotional uh, delivery of that line and the emotional response by his best friend says it all. 
we all know the story, but that immediately clicked in his head where that turned his story around from like, I don't know if I can keep this to like, dude, fair enough. I'm not about to do that to your aunt, you know, like just immediately realizing the gravity of the situation that said all that it needed to say. Well, and you know, they even touch on it a little bit more when they're in the restaurant, when it's he and aunt may, like after something goes awry with dinner Mm -hmm. and they want to put the the little restaurant that they always go to, apparently where even the waiter is hitting on her, Mm -hmm. you know, and and Peter Parker, Marissa Tomei. I mean, and, dude, of course, I mean, whammy. I, you know, if, if I was a waiter in that restaurant, I would be hitting on that, too. I yeah. just picture her okay. as a wrestler. I, I get just awkward. I don't know if y'all talk about this in the first half, but it's the first time I've looked at Aunt May and was like, yeah, I'd like to yes. talk that. Like, uh, yeah, hands yeah, down. We did, Unless I mean, you got a granny fetish. Yeah, I just, obviously, you go from Rosemary Harris <laughs> to the Flying Nun. There might be somebody <laughs> out there that's into the seniors. You I don't mean know. Sybil? <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, Aunt May absolutely killed it. Um, And honestly, the relationship between Peter and Aunt May is what made going back over that backstory unnecessary, really. Exactly. Like, you know, like the first part of the movie, like, you know that they have a relationship and that they love each other and she's doing, you know, doing the best she can. She cares about him. She worries about him. But for me, it was when he's getting ready for homecoming, like he he comes to her like, May, I need help. And montage, and it's like dancing, and like all this, like oh, it's so good. That was totally like the John Hughes feel of it. That's that that moment. I was just like, I love that. You don't see this shit in a superhero movie, yeah. almost ever. Uh, yeah, I remember when that scene, when that montage happened, looking at Hobbit, being like, "Fucking John Hughes, John like a Hughes, motherfucker, like a motherfucker." Like- <laughs> and and plus, since she's not old as dirt, you know. It's it's a little bit more conceivable that you know somebody who's fifteen or sixteen years old is going to have a an aunt that is roughly that age. Okay. <laughs> so, I mean, because to- Toby Maguire's aunt being eighty years old didn't you know like didn't do anything. Didn't no, do, it didn't. Didn't, you know? didn't, didn't just, get you aside hard. Aside from the fact that just making the fact that she'd be a scared old lady. Well, that's a, you would it? end up with like a like in this tone, you'd end up with like a weird like kind of racist Aunt May. That isn't like actually racist, but just be like, oh, Peter, you look so good. We got to get you some more modern friends. What do the black folk wear nowadays? They're always ahead of the times. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> yeah, they, the some of that is not actually born in the 1920s. Some, some of that hippity hoppity music. No, but also, um, I don't I don't know if you guys caught it, but there was also a risky bid- business. Um, yes. Reference. Oh, yeah. yeah. Where he did yeah. the total like slide yeah. thing. Uh, very, during, very briefly. Very briefly. While he was getting ready. But, in yeah. his briefs. So you kind of dad joked unten- unintentionally. There. Well, yeah, that the, this movie, which uh, an aspect of it that made it so great was that it was a love letter to John Hughes movies to, to the to the truly great high school 80s movies. And, uh, you know, they did. They weren't afraid to, to say, fuck it. Like that was half of our that's basically our inspiration. Yeah. One of the things I appreciate this movie over the other Spider-Man movies is that it's actually in New York. Like, oh, shit. Well, yeah. like, yes. There's not the suburbs. Like, he goes to visit the suburbs, but this takes place. They're in an apartment, and, you know, like in New York. In Queens. It's all in Queens. It's all local. And with well, the other movies, both the first one and the amazing shit fest, um, it's all them living in the suburbs and going to visit New York. So, and let's yeah. be fair, that house they had in the first one, they were not affording that on retirement fucking pay that close they to had New that York house, City. That house and then like a shit car, you know, I mean, yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, fair. Yeah, but, you know, going back to Kyle's point, you know, as far as John Hughes, um, just kind of, I guess you could call him an homage, you know, the uh, the scene where he's, he's in the spider suit and he's chasing after, you know, a uh, shocker. Um, you know, actually hearing like the Ferris Bueller music as he's like yes. running through the yards and stuff. Like, you were you were already thinking it, and then I mean, they show no, that clip. They literally, absolutely, should. they do you that, that for the da, younger da, da, crowd. Da, 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 da. Yeah, da, da, da. that was for us, and then actually showing it on TV was for the younger crowd who probably maybe hasn't seen it. Like, oh, what the fuck is that? Like, yeah, it's yeah. in home. Co- I gotta I, go check I, this I out. I would have, I would have liked to have seen though if they would have taken two seconds to be like. Like have him shake hands with a couple of girls and be like, "Hi, Spider Man." <laughs> well, at least he didn't run into a, like a Domino's guy. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, that would have made him Cameron. No, that's not right. <laughs> um, yeah, it John Hughes super hard. Um, I think Spider Man has been like this is now the third time. 
that they've done the backstory or the, they've done the backstory in the last two and everything like that. There was it honestly, like Hunter was saying earlier, it became basically a sequel where you got into the meat of the story at that point. You didn't have to do the introductions or anything like that. Everyone knows Spider-Man. Exactly. You got a little introduction of him in Civil War. Um, they didn't have to go into Uncle Ben. They didn't have to go into how he got his powers. They briefly mentioned the spider when yeah. he's walking with his buddy down the street and he's like, a spider? Like, I wish a spider would bite me. Well, maybe. Did it hurt? He's like, the spider's <laughs> dead, dude. <laughs> yeah, he's like, well, how bad did it hurt? Like, he's totally down for getting the powers, but not if it hurts a lot, you yeah. know? And Peter's like, no, nah, <laughs> I mean, sidekick. it's dead. It's like a, a moot, moot point. It's not important. Um, I loved those moments, those beats with get, giving a little bit of backstory, but just like a sentence, which we've said on all so many episodes of GUI that all you need is one sentence to explain a thing, which makes the movie all the better. And I feel like Homecoming is a perfect example that all it takes is a line yep. to just explain yeah. it and then it's done and then you just move on with your lives and enjoy the fucking movie. There's certain characters that at this point, I feel like we really don't need to explain their origin. And there's Spider Man, Batman, Superman. Superman. You you don't have to do it. Just no. we we all know. And if you don't, then just watch something of the past thirty years yeah. and you can update yourself and then watch the good movie, you know? So <laughs> <laughs> watch <laughs> Um I really want to get into we we touched on a oh, oh, oh got, I just wanted to say real quick, uh, because they didn't go into the backstory of like specifically how it happened or if it was that, you know, uh, you know, th this facility or whatever the case is, I kept picturing in my head the old shitty TV show where he's got his hand sitting on the counter in his apartment or he's like he's, he's sitting there and the spider just walks up and bites him and all of a sudden he's Spider-Man. Like, I don't know why, but that's what I pictured in my head. Like he was fucking making some peanut butter and jelly and the spider came up and bit him. Like, cause that was how it was in the old shitty TV show. Just a lazy version. Just like, the laziest oh, fucking version. Like, that's what I pictured. He was just like, fucking spider's dead. All right, I what? actually just assumed that he was the same, like, walkthrough where he was at, like, Oscorp and he was checking stuff out and he was, like, standing next to, uh, like, Andrew Garfield and, uh, and, uh, <laughs> and Toby McGuire. And Toby McGuire you know, Toby. Toby was the teacher, and the, too. He's and the, the, Toby with the, an eye. The blue and red spider rolls up and is just like, I want to buy people. And he just like looked at, at uh, Andrew Garfield and was like, no, I'm good. And, and I was like, no, no, I'm good, too. And he's like, all right, cool. I guess it's my turn. New franchise. New, new franchise. Yeah, new franchise. Of give, course, me that, give me that franchise bite real was, quick. The one thing, uh, although I love the uh, first Spider-Man with Toby McGuire, that was the ridiculous thing that the fucking spider is... Like, really? Really? Do you that's make where the he, goddamn spider blue and that's red? That's where he got the inspiration to make a probably worth, like, two to three grand uh, Spider-Man outfit that he just naturally... <laughs> he just to, came up with the material. Spider powers, like, you know, because spiders know how to make, like, really nice-looking superhero suits. Well, they, so I feel weird shitting on that very first Spider-Man movie because it's one of the early ones. Yeah, I mean, it's the true. Only, good. True, you true. have X-Men and then that. There wasn't a shitload <laughs> of movies, so... We can pick apart in the Green Goblin with the awful dialogue and shit like that, but it's and that still, helmet, oh yeah, but it's still one of the originators, and so yeah. like still, I still hold something with that movie, absolutely, just because of what it started, and it still had a great ending. Uh, you know, his spider sense coming to play. Like, they have that whole scene where he's getting the shit kicked out of him. You know, he's getting knocked through the bricks, and it's a it's it's sort of similar to the scene where he's trapped under the rubble in Homecoming where you see him struggling, truly struggling and hurting and in pain, comes back, does the flip over the thing, and then he dies. Like, that scene is, that ending was excellent. Pretty on point, yeah. No, but it but it was also, like like Hunter was saying, that, that 2002, really, when it came out, that was needed, okay? If that, if that Spider-Man hadn't have come out when it did, we might not see... Absolutely, like, like right. superhero movies as they are like, today at that, all. Because that or X Men. Think about think about like what Batman and Robin did to the superhero oh, genre. Oh, Killed it, Jesus. Yes, and you oh. know, of course, you had Blade that came out, you had X Men that came out, but it was really it was Spider Man that really kind of got the ball rolling. Yeah, yeah, but Blade was basically like pre Netflix level. Like it wasn't a big. No, it, it was, nobody expected it, to do shit. And yeah, it did correct. well, and it, yeah. it, it did very well. And you know, if it hadn't have been for you know that previously mentioned stuff which i won't even go into again um screwing everything up so badly you know it, where would things be today I mean, we could have been here 10 years ago yeah, yeah. um i just want to touch on what smash said um <clears throat> yeah the they were comparable scenes as far as the 2002 spider-man and you know homecoming and uh but 
Tom Holland's performance, mm-hmm. like miles above Tobey Maguire's. Absolutely. Tom Holland's performance when he's just covered by the building and he's pushing himself up. I mean, you see him broken, cry- like almost crying, just agonizing. Fifteen year old kid, right? Like it's it's. it's I, I felt I felt him at that point. Like I, I felt what he felt I at that point. I completely give you that. Like, and I, it was I amazing. Teared up a little bit. Yeah, it was such a such a well done scene. Great acting chops there, man. I mean, I'd say that Tom Holland definitely it was better than Tobey Maguire, but I think comparable to both those movies, it's Michael Keaton. Oh yeah, is where cool. comparing the two movies just excels so much more than William Defoe. Defoe. Yeah, he's whack job crazy, but some of that dialogue and acting with when he that was is talking to himself in the mirror awful. is pretty. Yeah, my yeah. yeah. fucking hokey. knocked it out of the park yeah, with this movie. I absolutely. mean, I, I'm almost putting him as one of the top top villains. Like said, yeah, the agreed. turning point, one, the car. Yeah, one of one of my biggest things from the Sam Raimi ones that I didn't like, and and he did a good job with the first two. Okay, I'll give I'll give him that. Um, the one thing that always kind of drove me nuts, or drove me nuts, was the fact that his webbing was built into his wrist. Okay. Because yeah, that bothered me too. That bothered me a whole lot. Kind of lazy to kind of see to kind of see the kid not only develop the stuff, but like you know, sit there and kind of hide it in his chemistry class. <laughs> when he's that was awesome. Su- under lockers, be, yeah, behind the lockers, to be doing other work, it, you know, it, hiding it under lockers. And then basically going to pick it up when he needs to use it, just literally lifting all the lockers up. <laughs> See, I feel like S- Sam Raimi missed an opportunity there. If they had a, like that Peter Parker where he shot webbing out of his ass, uh, that would have made it <laughs> way more of a Sam Raimi Spider Man, where it's just like, could you see that scene where he's like trying to figure out where he's doing the handshake and stuff, but he's like figuring out if it's a twerk or like <laughs> what it is that makes the would, webbing. Would you, would you, would you use the Raimi com- cam where it follows it from his ass to whatever he shoots? Oh, yeah, at, but so. it'd be like super hyper kinetic where it's like <laughs> so <laughs> ass cheeks and then fast cam. And he, it would just be like with it the too? Spider-Man it's suit like... with the two little buttons with the ass flap that pops down <laughs> like for him to shoot like webbing. Just like that high pitch little, you get like a. <laughs> so it's like you get the hammer. That's, no, that's, that's webbing, the name of the, the episode yeah. is the Spider-Man uh, ass webbing uh, or the webbing ass flap. Oh. Yeah. That's... So it's like basically you get the Evil Dead like after it shoots out you just follow the webbing to its target. Oh. Yeah. It's the brown oh. silk. <laughs> Zipping through uh, fucking trees and buildings. That would be so good. No, I, I one oh. the one thing I liked about uh, the iteration with the Amazing Spider-Man is they made it back into what it was in the comic books, which was that he kind of had a, a natural talent to create this webbing. Yeah, they got one thing yeah. right. Yeah, and the one thing that's like the <laughs> one thing. thing. But no, it, it made more sense that way. The fact the fact that uh, I don't know if anybody besides me has seen uh, Earth versus the Spider. It's a super mm-hmm. indie flick where a guy gets bitten by a spider and he starts developing like s- skills, but. He shoots webbing like out of his chest. Does he and shoot it, out of his ass or no? Out of his okay. chest. Out of his chest. No. But Dan Ac- Dan Aykroyd's a cop and he's fat and it's weird. And like, it, it's, is he a Dan Aykroyd fat? I know. Is he, is he a cop? <laughs> but it, it's a weird movie. But it also kind of like I think the entire movie was based on the like that's not how a Spider Man would happen. You know, just right. stoners yeah. hanging out, be like, no, dude. No, I think what would happen, man, is like they just like <laughs> he would shoot like, the webbing from his dick. From his dick. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's got to be a porn. Yeah, seriously. It's actually be. called Spider Babe. We'll go into that later. Spider oh balls. no, I bet it's a real. You, you know, it. she shoots it from her crotch. With Misty fucking Monday. Yes, yes I've seen it's that in his collection. We, yeah. s- <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know the 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 one thing about the the homecoming, which I think that Sam Raimi did a great job bringing it, you know, to the masses, and it became popular. And, and second one's a phenomenal movie. The character, on the other hand, like Stanley built that character to be an awkward, like pimply faced kid who has no idea what the fuck he's doing, but has a really solid heart and was given these powers. And that's what they did in this movie specifically was focus on that. They 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 focused on the character as it was originally incepted by Stanley, yeah. which none of them have done. And, and that's what I was going to say that with the amazing Spider-Man. That's where they lost me is they were like, this is a new cool hip. Peter Parker and like Emo. this movie, yeah. Well, and they finally got it back to where it needs to be, which is this awkward. Kid's, Peter yeah, Parker, awkward. Yeah. He's got yeah. one friend. You know, he gets picked on all the time. He talks too much. Yeah, he's, yeah. And that always bothered me about Amazing Spider-Man. It's just like he skateboards and he's kind of cool with the ladies. Yeah, no, that's yeah. not fucking Peter Parker. No. Plus, I mean, how great was Stan Lee's cameo in this movie? Oh, that was that, great. Oh yeah, how's great. your mother? And now, honestly, <laughs> yeah, your honestly mother? to me, this is now I've I've. I've said 
you know, I guess in the last couple of years, I, I, I thought that his cameo in Deadpool was like his oh, best one. That he's amazing. On. This is a very close second because yeah. he's like he's, yelling out of a window in New York and he's like, how's your mother? Yeah, like, he's yeah. acting yeah. like a complete player. So in the last it's, three, it's he's been a amazing. womanizer. Yes. Oh well, and the guy. The, the, well, speaking of which, well, it, it's I I hate to bring this up after you know. But we're uh, talking about Stan. So. Yeah, we're talking about Stan. Uh, yeah. Recent news is that his wife of like 60, 70, 70, years, 70, 70 years, seventy years. They've been married in forty seven. Yeah, ninety three. They've yeah. been married longer than my mom has been alive. Yeah, <laughs> by like a decade. No, same here. My mom too. My, my mom. Yeah. Like at least four or five years. That that says something, and and honestly, like our thoughts are uh, at, no no jokes here. Our thoughts are definitely yeah, raising the glass uh, mm-hmm. for Stanley and uh, and his unfortunately right. departed wife from um, the GUI family. From the GUI, GUI family, sir. Like I I can't imagine. Thoughts and um, our our thoughts are with Stan, and like so many people posted today. The worry is that it's going to be a, a Johnny and June Carter broken heart syndrome, man. The broken heart. Dude, it's it's like, a real thing. I know. And the thing is, like, he's in his 90s. Like, he's he's done well, but he's had health issues in, in recent time. And his and partner's honestly, gone. Yeah. And his and his and his like 70 years, dude. His I partner, can't imagine like, your life partner. At that point I is cannot gone, imagine like, like best I, friend. I, you are her and she is you. There's yeah, no that, distinction there's, anymore. Th- and knowing how to live beyond that, especially yeah. if you're already in your 90s. Like, how do you even. I, I don't know, but and that, I mean, think about that. That's that's like it's like eighty some percent of your life. He lost his Mary Jane. He did. No, this is more than Mary Jane. Like I I mean I is Gwen Stacy. Uh, not even Mary Gwen Jane. Stacy. This is something so different. This is yeah. I mean, just think about that many years sharing a life with somebody. Like I I, 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 I being I married. Know. Like we you know what I mean. Yeah. We can't even fathom that no. many years with somebody. Oh no! no. I mean, no, I, mean like, I I I you say you hope. say we're going to be there, but you to actually fucking be there. Is a totally I'm 35. I'm not going to live long enough to have that long a marriage. Like yeah, yeah, he got married super young. Yeah, yeah, he got yeah, married. Yeah. Yeah, like, yeah, I mean, there's uh, there's no chance I'm gonna 20s. even if like <laughs> so. a year from now I get married and then I live super long. I'm still not going to hit 70 years with somebody. It's just not going to happen. It's a beautiful thing to hit 93. You know, I've I've seen on online that people are like, oh, tragic, tragic. It's like no. It's sad, well, but it's not tragic. It's, I wouldn't. It's a beautiful thing that they got that much time together, and I'm yeah. sure he is sad. But I doubt. I I don't think that he's. I wouldn't feel like he's sitting around thinking, "Oh, this is so tragic." Like this was. She's ninety three. They had to start you know, They lived an amazing life. Yeah, it's realistically. The 80s and they're together and still alive. That's high fiving time. Yeah, right? yeah. Like, Jesus. Yeah. Realistically, <laughs> yeah. he's probably like ninety three. We had so many good years and so, we had such a great life. Like you know what I mean? Like I, I would think. I would hope yeah. that he realizes that too. It's like when my grandma hit know. ninety. I remember year after year, all she'd say is, "She's just like, I woke up this morning." <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck do you got? Stanley, got Stanley, Sunrise. Stanley is still going to conventions. He's still yeah. hanging out with fans. I mean, for somebody that age, like that's incredible. <laughs> Movement's life. Yeah. Now, so for like for my one grandparent who made it into their nineties, my grandmother. I mean, she smoked three packs a day, and basically, yeah, she was ninety three when she died as well. And honestly, like. That's well, before I, they put the chemtrails in the cigarettes. That's uh, yeah, really what started yeah, so making them the dangerous. natural stuff. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, you know, it, no filter. It's, but, you know, she was, she was at that point, she was already in a wheelchair. And I don't, I, you know, everything that I saw with, with Stan and his wife, like she was walking around and like basically yeah. acting not any different than you or I would. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, you know, it's, it's really a testament. It's, it's, it's really great that they were able to have such a long relationship to have such an active lifestyle Yeah, and I, I, for as long as they were able to do. I, I hate that we had to get serious for a minute, but, but I mean, this, it, but yeah. there's no joking. It's about okay this. to this do that. Is, he, this is his baby. Like yeah. Spider-Man, like this was his first, yeah, like, yeah. I and, mean, and it's just, it's a unfo- big one. Yeah. It's it's unfortunate, that, but, but our hearts go out to, to Stan and uh, we, we hope that he, deals with this as best as possible. I, I can't imagine. Like, I don't know how, but... Exactly. Like, I literally have yeah, no like, idea. I, I, I don't... E- I'm not even going to pretend 90, to know like how, years, how that is even... I, I have no idea, but <laughs> but our thoughts are with him, and uh, and we have the utmost love and respect for, for Stan and his family um, while they're dealing with this. It's, yep. you know, it sucks. People die, and they it happens every day, but it, it sucks when it's somebody that you care about and you love, or 
it happens to somebody that you love, you know. Yeah. Uh, anyway, anyway yeah, okay. you know, we got what you're saying. We got back what you're saying. Back to the Dick and Park jokes. Back yeah, to the Dick and Park jokes. I know. That. I, love, I, know I, I really wanted to get into the Easter eggs because there are so goddamn oh, many uh, Easter eggs. There are so many. We, we have time. Like, deep cuts. We've got uh, about 20 minutes. We got about oh, okay. 20 minutes. So, um, well, some of these are probably in the villains though, too. So this well, will actually work out. For them. Microphone. Talk into the microphone. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. Stay um, here. Some of these will parlay into to, to, to villains. Yeah, but you know, some of them were just kind of like subtle nods to, and some were like shocker, obviously a shocker. Like they were overt yes. as fuck about that. So I don't think I even put that on there um, because they said, now you're the shocker. Okay. That's not an Easter egg. That's like plot. Yeah. At that yeah, point. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But that, but that character, Herman Schultz is actually like, he's the one who it, like comic book wise was actually shocker. Yeah. So, but I, to, to I, see him actually get brought in, you know, even though he was the second shocker, it um, kind of reminded me of uh, of oh god, what was that movie where Henry Rollins wore the the pink uh, sweatpants? Um, the horror movie. I'm drawing a blank on that one. Yeah, is I don't. Recent? Yeah. Uh, no, no, no. This was like ten or fifteen years ago. It was a horror movie where they were stuck at a bar. And and the, the main feast 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 right. where the main protagonist is like it was like badass guy and he's like yeah we're gonna do this and then like a few minutes later like a monster comes in and like eats his head off <laughs> and then a girl comes up and is like all right well then I guess you know I'll figure it out we'll get it done and it's like actual main protagonist <laughs> that's what Shocker did where it's just like that's the Shocker never mind it's Bakim Woodbine right. who I love I love yeah. him he's great ever since Big Hit I mean, uh, yeah <laughs> one was the whiny bitch. You know, because he was kind of the the he first guy knew. was kind of a whiny bitch. He was the guy that showed up for late uh, late for work all the time and was like a shitty worker and right. didn't give a shit and and he's just, just done with him. And then yeah. you had the second yep. one, and you could see that where that will go. Yeah. You oh know? yeah. You yeah. could totally see that's where. Maybe I'm gonna have to talk. You're like, all right. Now <laughs> he's gonna you break yourself. He'll, he'll break Vulture out, and Vulture will be part of the. But when but, but like six. when you look at the other guy, you're like he has the physical character characteristics of what you expect to be like behind the mask. Yeah. You know he did. Except for the just like his just total like being an ass part. He's still he's still a little kind of doofusy when they're selling the weapons and reacting oh, totally. with that oh, yeah. shooting stuff. So you kind of knew like this isn't going to be the main shocker. No, because so. like he's the one who's like he, you know he's basically he's shooting the weapon at him and everything and being like just woo, <laughs> like, <laughs> having a lot of fun with it and what? it's 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 absolutely just... I kill you, mate. What I yeah. did love with Bakeem Woodbine, Woodbine, though, is that, that that fucking shocker outfit from the comics, no. That's not going to... I'm sorry, no. that's not going to happen. No. It's not going to fly. The jacket no. worked well, though. But that's he had, like, a, a vest, and then the the undershirt was this yellow thing with, like, the crosshatch, like, stitching on it, which was, like, an homage to the shocker outfit without being over... It looked super just normal. Yeah. It didn't look weird, uh, but it was definitely a play towards the shocker costume. I thought that was a really smart move. Yeah. But I, you know, I think it 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 builds a great uh, thing for the character to be brought in in the future. Yeah. Um, because number one, he only has the one, um, the one thing for one arm. Oh, you mean crossbones is punchy punch thing? Yeah. Because that's what it was. <laughs> yeah. Much. It's li- no, no, but, no, it's not pretty much. Like, it was no, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's exactly. It was literally it repurposed. It, it for was that a movie. repurposed um, uh, crossbones punchy punch thing. But when it gets the other one, you know, he can be like the full fled. But it's sort of like uh, we were looking at earlier, uh, uh, Loki's. Uh, Eye, you know, grabber yes. from Avengers. We sticks in the dude's eye, is and, what, what, and reads it, the, and then reads sends the, the information. Right, yeah. like the front of that thing um, that they used during the robbery of to the bank, cut out the ATM to cut out the ATM. And I didn't realize it was when a I looked giant through it, version. it literally fucking looked. I mean, like right down to the to everything, it looked like that. Yeah. So you know, which makes sense because they would repurpose they repurpose technology for them. Yeah. So they were vultures. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, hmm. yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. But he didn't, but he wasn't obsessed with youth. That was one of the big thing about that character that they didn't throw in there. You know, vultures, one of his big things was that to, because he was older to be youthful. Right. I'm just glad they went with the, they went with the, the fur um, jacket. Uh, yeah, like the just on the almost. bomber jacket as opposed to like the weird plumage thing. Yeah. 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 Like, cause no, that would I, not have played well. That was a very smart no. move. That was a subtle, it, just like the, the sleeves with shocker. It was a, 
it was a suggestion of without being overplayed. Yeah. It was you very know, smart. Goddamn well, Michael Keaton would have been walked in and went, uh, uh fuck no. He's like, no, I did that. <laughs> you in fucking want- Birdman. Yeah, <laughs> like, like I don't want the big. Green, I did that for an feathery, Oscar. <laughs> like big wings. No, it's yeah. like I want, I want something well, that's different. And this movie would have made sense. It would have been no. No. This one, it almost looked like he had like two turbines from the helipad like on the back of his wings. That's, no, exactly. That's, that's exactly what, he what it was. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. It was great. It's like mini versions. Now, the the one that I really wanted to talk about because this will be a character that we will almost definitely see in a future Spider-Man because I feel like Spider-Man is a suggestion after uh, of Phase 4. Right. After Infinity Wars, this is kind of the direction they're going. Spider-Man's just kind of a like sneak peek on what they're doing after Infinity Wars. Um, a Maybe people didn't get it, but there there was the the mid uh, stinger uh, <laughs> stinger um, oh, uh, scorpion, uh, <laughs> scorpion uh, yeah. Mac Gargan, oh, who was God, one of the so one of the bad guys along with that got like knocked off the boat during the boat scene and stuff, um, and he got all fucked up from it. Uh, they even talked about the 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 Gorgon tail or something when they were talking about if they have enough gear to get shit together. <laughs> um, that's just that's Scorpion. And, and if you weren't sure, there's a Scorpion tattooed on his neck, on his neck. Yeah, just to go. <laughs> hey, there you go. All right, like, like Ferris Bueller on the TV when he's running. Pretty through. much, yeah. yeah they were like Scorpion the on the neck. What could he be? The guy know. that they use is so great for this because we've already seen him in other stuff, like in Better Call Bad, Saul. Better Call Saul as like a, a really you know a bad guy, quote unquote. Um, but you know. To even to, to go back to, to, to the end part where he's like he's asking Vulture. It's like, yeah, so I I I I heard you know who's the Spider Man kid is. You know? So you get to see a little bit more of that development right at the end, and it's phenomenal. I love it. They had a common goal. Kill Spider Man. Now the the other one that I really wanted to touch on is uh Prowler. Yeah. Um yes. a- Aaron Davis, who's played by uh Donald Glover. Donald. <laughs> Donald Glover, uh, also known as Childish Gambino, uh, Donald Glover from Community, who I'm a huge fan of. Uh, his oh, his stand up is great. His music is fantastic, and he's a he's a hell of an actor. I think Lowdown. Yeah. We talked about uh, Atlanta. That yeah, he's like he's basically just stepped out of Atlanta, which, yeah, into Spider Man, and then yeah. went back to Atlanta. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, same <laughs> outfit and yeah. way he was acting. Well, because yeah, they he, film him there anyways, he, right? He, he he looked just like. Laid back, like man. I guess. Please don't shoot me. I laid guess. Man, I got ice cream. Man, shit. Yeah, right? he would tie his balls. <laughs> I but thought, I thought you were a girl. That scene with Spider-Man in the parking lot is absolutely fantastic. Yes. But a lot of people may not realize who he is. He's the Prowler, which has kind of gone back and forth between a villain and actually helping Spider-Man out at times. Mm-hmm. And also in the Ultimates universe is the uncle of one Miles Morales. Yes. Yes, he is. And, mm-hmm. you know, honestly, what I thought was great was. Uh, you know when they bring that character in, and, and Peter Parker is using that uh, that that voice changer on his suit. Yeah, so oh my good. God. <laughs> yeah, I was like, dude, it reminded me. I don't know if you ever saw Zach Galifianakis's like live at the Purple Onion. Oh, I love that stand up. You know where he uh, he does he has a uh, has a twin that he does Seth Galifianakis, which is that. Um, he basically has that same North Carolina voice like he does in the campaign. It's basically the character right. that he plays in, uh, in the, the election, election, the campaign. Yeah, the campaign. Yeah, campaign. yeah, yeah. Um, but there's a, there's a part in that where he basically asks after he's already been talking to the interviewer to to get one of those little blurry faces and to get his voice changed and everything. And that's exactly what it sounds like, and it is fucking phenomenal. Hmm. If you have not checked out Live at the Purple Onion, do it now. Yeah, absolutely. Um, because it's absolutely hilarious. But I I love how. Donald Glover, they kept his name out of the press for almost right up until the release, uh, really, on what he was playing. And for good reason. Uh, this is alluding to the fact that Miles Morales might be... Well, I mean, I was going to say that initially when they even talked about doing another Spider-Man movie, he was rumored to be Miles Morales. Well, so. and, and furthermore, like... Sony doesn't have the rights to Miles Morales. Yeah. <laughs> Marvel does. Yeah. So, of course, they're going to try to incorporate Miles Morales. They don't have to fuck with Sony for Miles Morales. Now, I, I think we're pretty certain that he won't. He's not going to. He's not Miles Morales. Who? Uh, Denal? 
Yeah. Denald. <laughs> yeah, Denald. <laughs> <Fuck her. laughs> um, no, no, uh, he, he's, the yeah, he's the Prowler. Yeah, he's the Prowler. Yeah, he's the Prowler. As I was going to say, like, in that parking lot scene, he does mention to Spider-Man, like, when he's all honest, he's like, no, I got, like, nieces and nephews in this I, hood. He's I'm like, not, I, no, I don't he want says guns. No, specifically, I have a nephew. I have a nephew, yeah. and I don't want these guns here. Yeah. So it's like, hey... Hey, hey, poke, poke. <laughs> right. Yeah, I, and I wasn't hinting towards him being Miles Morales, but initially when they started talking about another Spider-Man yes, movie, yes. he was. He was and so the fact that he's in this movie but not playing well, that was he, a good kind of fuck you. He there, does him. voice Miles Morales in the cartoon. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean. It was an easy connection. That's an easy yeah. connection, yeah. But that's why they let, it was breadcrumbs that they left and everybody the, ate them up. The thing is, I would love to see Donald Glover or, or, or as a... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I, Dan, I always almost say Danny Glover. Denald. Um, Denald Glover. Hey, uh, it's a 30 Rock joke. As hey. Miles Morales, but Miles hey, hey, is a young kid. Uh, unfortunately, he's aged out at this point. He would do a fantastic job if he was the right age uh, for the character, but he's not. So, yeah. unfortunately. But uh, that was a super fun um, Easter egg for me. Though, probably my personal favorite is right at the tail end of the movie. Mm-hmm. Uh, when he's basically given the keys to the kingdom and told he could be an Avenger if he wants to, and he turns it down, and uh, <sighs> that little like thing opens it. up, and you iron see spider. the iron, iron spider, spider. Oh, spider. Yeah. the fucking iron spider and it looks out there. So good, it looks so, so shiny, content. and he's like, "Nah, you know what? I got some more shit to learn." It's like, "Fuck you, kid." Put it on for five minutes. X-rated hidden scene, him back at home. Fat, 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 That's fat, what fat, it should have been. <laughs> like, seriously. You know what he should have done? He should have had the arms come out and him all <laughs> yeah, <just laughs> jerking him off. off. <laughs> <laughs> seriously, though. Man, you know, oh, God, I got hard from seeing it, let alone, like, being Peter Parker. Like, ooh, I could play in that. Like, fuck, right. man. Like, you are, you are being invited to be an Avenger. He's like, I got some more shit to learn. It's like, I respect it. But you dumb motherfucker, what are you doing? <laughs> yeah. He's never actually an Avenger, so I mean, I knew he wasn't going to accept well, it. Well, I, I mean, he's that. not, he's a pseudo Avenger. No, that's, it, he's actually made it into the Avengers at this point in the comics, but it's been a running joke for a long time that Spider Man always wants to be in the Inve mm -hmm. Avengers, but he's never invited to be part of the Avengers. It's a running thing. Yeah, he's just kind of like there. He helps, but he's not like... Yeah, who knows the if ultimate. there's the possibility he might actually use that outfit and say one of the he, upcoming... No, he's features. definitely going to use it in Infinity War. Oh, yeah. First yeah. off, definitely. it's built. Hands, it, we know it's there. If they don't ever do anything with it, I will fucking punch Kevin Feige in the no, face. I, no, I no. think, I think uh, you know, it's definitely getting used in either one or two. Uh, oh, I, I think probably honestly, to the climax. Gonna, yeah, it could be, it could go either way. Honestly, I I, I think you could be using either. Just one use them both. Movies. Yeah, absolutely. Starting the first, why, and moving why on not? the second. Yeah, I mean, they could introduce it halfway in. You know. Um, and while we're on that scene, uh, one of the things I appreciated about this movie was just the it it wasn't an Iron Man movie, but. When a Spider-Man movie comes out, we actually see more FaceTime with John Favreau at Happy than we've ever seen yes. with him, like ever. And and the the interaction between him and Spider and Peter is fantastic. Oh, it's so oh, good. Yeah. But here's an Easter egg that maybe you guys aren't familiar with: uh, the principal, um, who has actually showed up in uh, in Marvel before, uh, Principal Marita is uh, the same last name as one of the Howling Commandos. And if you look in his oh, office, yeah. his grandfather was one of the original Howling Commandos mm -hmm. by by uh, basically... From, from Captain America. From, for, yeah, from Captain America, played by the same actor. Which is awesome. Yeah, That's which is badass. amazing. So he played his own grand grandfather. Mm -hmm. I am my own grandpa, uh, basically, <laughs> is what he did there. So that's fantastic. That's, that's such a fun little thing to do. You know, just a little unnecessary but wonderful thing that people aren't going to well, pick up on. So much which has got to be weird to have Captain America doing the, you know, PSAs <laughs> and like his <laughs> grandfather was hanging out with Cap, you know, and now he's doing these PSAs. He has to play for all these high school kids. Like, yeah, yeah, right. And I, which, I love Hannibal oh. Burris in that. Oh like, Watch this video. I mean, yeah. I'm pretty sure he's like, uh, he's the most wanted person now. Like, uh, he's wanted for treason, but you know, whatever. Yeah. yeah he's like, <laughs> we're, the government we're, says we got to play it. Yeah. We're required to show these. Uh, the, probably one of the best, pointless, but best post credit scenes. At the last one. Yeah. I put Ever. that up with their Deadpools. Yeah. One. So yeah. meta. Yeah. It's just like, you know, <sighs> super that meta. Sparked them to do that probably because of Deadpool. And they were, they, you know, but 
When he's just like, you waited all this time. You waited for something really great. And they didn't just Jason, put you're in- not going to get it. And then laugh it off like, you motherfuckers. How many more of these do we have to do? Yeah, how many more? And, like, uh. and like, Low Down, we were talking about how pretty much they didn't just put him in a cap outfit, but they put him in the cheesiest cap yeah, outfit yeah. The OG, possible. Yeah. Yeah. The, uh, well, the OG <laughs> Avengers, the first movie. Right, but outfit. I'm just saying like that looks silly as shit. And he's well, giving so lessons. Well, so silly that in the movie, he barely wore the helmet. Yeah. Like, yeah. barely. Yeah. Like, yeah. he wore it for, like, a second. It was like, I'm good. And just then he had his, like, floppy, sandy blonde hair, and then he was but good. But he did, mm-hmm. like, several of them. Like, did we win, like, safe sex? And, like, and he's oh, just like. Man. Yeah, they almost just, go into the safe sex. I would love for there to be bloopers or something oh, on no, the DVD, which just, that's like, Blu-ray. 10 of them. That is blue. Yes. You that, know that they're going to cover. Just give us, like, 10 more. Of yeah, those, absolutely. Like, when, a, when a P and a V. <laughs> <laughs> Here's my shield. When a no, shield and a hydra beat together. He was born in the 20s, so they start talking about birds and bees and shit. Like, Captain America talks about crabs. <laughs> no, but crabs. he's picking up shit now that he's in the... No, but I love that. They're, they're like, you know, I was frozen for 65 years, so shit's changed. <laughs> yeah. I want to know when that was filmed. Was that after the events in Avengers or after the, or before? Well, by the suit, you can actually tell that it was probably right after Avengers before Winter Soldier. Right, because so. he was super think, popular. At that. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think what it was, because obviously you see the start of the movie, movie ends right around the end of that first Avengers movie. Right. Um, I think it was filmed somewhere in the meantime. In those eight years? In the, yeah. in the, somewhere in those eight years. They should. Marvel should totally do like a behind the scenes of filming that. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, uh, we gotta get out of here in just a second, but before we go, I really want to talk about the Vulture just one more time before we get going. As far as uh, Marvel... No, let's not even do Marvel, just in general, villain, superhero villains from movies. Um... Where does this place for you? For me, with and I, I know I've talked, I've talked before about this, but that car scene it ranks pretty high because right yeah. there, no costume, he's just there, but he is evil as fuck. Yeah, yeah. The evolution of that character from the beginning of the movie up until that point, mm-hmm. um, I was okay with the vulture. It was, it was fine. He's an okay guy <laughs> or an okay villain. <laughs> he's all right, he's, he's an all right dude. He's an all right dude. He's, he's no Zod. He's an I mean, okay villain, but when he when cares he cares about his family, <laughs> definitely true. cares about he's his family. They uh, all care about when you get, family. but like I agree with you. When you get to that car scene and you see <sighs> that his descent into it literally almost not into madness, but just into the ends justify the means, no matter what, and that's the way I am going to be now. Like he didn't give a fuck, and that switch it was almost like a serial killer switch you know like uh with the movie with edward norton and richard gear god primal damn it. fear primal fear, primal fear. where at the end of the movie he's like stuttering and then he switches on to the you know and he's yeah, just and he like a clap yeah like that's how good that that transition was that's what i'm saying he wasn't a generic super villain like we've had in some of the other movies oh. where it's just the honestly the green goblin where it's like i'm gonna get you spider-man he's just yeah. like i'm gonna fuck up your yeah, family see? yeah <laughs> no and the fact that you know and we were talking about this earlier before the podcast started it's like you know he he makes no allusions to the fact that right after his daughter gets out of the, the car he grabs the glock yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. All right. And he's not he's not necessarily showing it directly to Spider Man by any means, but he's like, if you mess with my if you mess with me and you mess with my family, it's just gonna get fucking real. Yeah. Yeah. And you know what? <laughs> the, you're right, that that switch. Like and, and I think it starts when he actually realizes that Spider Man that Peter Parker is Spider Man. Oh sure. Yeah. You see that. Like just, but it's just, so they, subtle. They do that, but no, but they oh, do that subtle. like through the through the rearview mirror. It yeah. was like just the tip, you know. You know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, seriously. You see, you see the eyes change, right? And then as soon as she gets out, of the, you know, when he does, like, I'm gonna have a little. I'm gonna have the talk. That's a testament yeah. to Michael Go Keaton ahead. because he, that's just what well, he can go from normal to fucking crazy. Yeah, I, I think in another time. I think another thing that's actually pretty pretty cool about his with Michael Keaton's character with Vulture is. That pretty much most of the villains that are these rich assholes who just want to control the world, this dude's middle class who pretty much is like, I'm just trying to make some extra money off this shit. He's not trying to take over the world. He's just like, I'm looking to make some fucking dough off this shit. And right. Because he got fucked. He got fucked. That's, yeah. So that's yeah. a little different than some of your other supervillains. Well, and, and you definitely see that when he's talking with Peter Parker about... You know, you you get it. You've been pushed off by Stark and trying to find a, a commonality with him. And there's a moment where Peter kind of recognizes that he a little does. bit. But he also understands that it's a different situation for him versus Vulture. Like, 
Vulture is a bad guy. And, yeah. and and he's not about to fucking side. He's not about to join the dark side, basically. But uh, we, we could talk about uh, Spider-Man Homecoming <laughs> all day and especially Spider-Man in general all day. But unfortunately, we are at our end of this episode of Geeks Under the Influence. Thank you guys so much for listening. Um, we always have a blast doing this, especially when we talk about something that we're so passionate about, like Spider-Man and especially a good goddamn spider-man movie finally back to fucking Woo! marvel oh, oh. Flat, flat, flat. yeah so now fantastic four needs to come home and, yeah no uh, oh my god please oh, oh by Seriously. the way i was telling you this outside how cool it is the the movie's called homecoming and where the fuck is that character coming back to yeah coming back, coming back home, home. Oh, on my purpose god. yeah which by the way there was a series uh called spider-man homecoming yes. but it, it heavily involved yeah. uh the black spider-man suit right uh that only in that. spirit really is there any connection to the comics so if if you run across the comics uh it's a it's a good run definitely check it out but it has nothing to do with the storyline in spider-man homecoming i guarantee so, you the tom hardy venom and the carnage are going to be they're spilling over that'll be like phase six they're talking about it not necessarily being involved but we'll, we'll get into yeah, we'll that get into more that down, the uh, yeah. down the road but oh, we will uh, for now thank you for listening to geeks under the influence follow us on uh all of our social media all the links are at guipodcast.com tell your friends and please uh rate us on itunes that actually moves us up in the rankings gives other people an opportunity to disc- discover this fantastic podcast and uh join us every first and third monday at fallout for uh, Geeks Under the Influence Trivia and every second and fourth Tuesday at Wonderland. Uh, thanks also to the Gajir Experiment for the use of Little Girl on the intro and for the use of Dead by Dawn on the outro by our friends the Creepazoids who mm. unfortunately, uh, rest in peace, uh, mm. just played their last show over 4th of July weekend. So uh, y'all. we will still be playing their tracks in honor of how badass that fucking band was. Uh, but until then... Uh, we will see you next week. I'm Mike the Hobbit Bicket. Join us or die. Shut the fuck up, Hobbit. What the fuck? Join us or die. Join us or die. Or I will swallow your soul. Necronomicon gives us power to rise from the dead. You play the tape. Our play begins to spread. You can fight all you want because you don't to resist. We're here to take the world and rule with an iron fist. So join us or die. GUIPodcast.com <laughs>